Welcome to Third and Eight here on Next Door Radio, brought to you by Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment. Let's get the show started with your hosts, Brandon and Jason. Hey guys, and welcome back here to Third and Eight on Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. It is a Halloween edition, and that's our spooky music, I guess. Um, and I'm dressed up as the world's most terrifying thing. Uh, equality? A positive pregnancy test. Oh! oh wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Close, but we, yeah. We all have kids. Um, I would rather see Jason Voorhees... I'd really much rather fight Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees two on one than have to see these two lines. Uh, shout out to KFC. Yeah, shout out to KFC. <laughs> no, nah, shout out to Bojo's. Me and Chris ordered uh, hey two uh, hey Supreme dinners early though the four piece. We ended up with uh, uh, how many uh, hey dinners we ended up with? Uh, uh, hey, you and I ended up with six or seven a piece. Yeah, boy, twelve or thirteen, boy. Yeah, yeah what this was me and Chris would have been trying to finish through, that. It was like I see what's in that truck right there. You know, go ahead and feed them the double. Yeah, I'll tell you something scary. <laughs> I had five soft taco supremes. <laughs> oh, what's scary yourself. about that is about 30 minutes from now. That's, that's what I'm saying. Let's break some between the segments. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, you know, I was somewhat confused by your outfit, but I, I do like the costume. Can you guess what I am? A disappointed Washington fan, as usual. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. Hey, yeah, wait until my costume is segment three. That one's gonna be my most favorite one. Actually, this this one's that was impressive, home. Brent. What you're better at picking costumes than you are picking winners. Oh, I thought you would say baby mama's either way too for two. <laughs> um, hey, as we said last week on last week's show, this is a Halloween edition. <laughs> what what uh, what? <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, each team's scariest proposition. Um, you want to do each team's scariest proposition in this year or headed into next year? Oh. Uh. That way, I know which one to choose. Let's do n- next year. Okay, so each team's scariest proposition heading in. All right, um, hey, excuse me, heading into the next season. Okay, Oakland, excuse me, Las Vegas and Baltimore, excuse me, they're on bye week, and so we'll start there. Okay, I'll start in Las Vegas. The scariest proposition is finding more emails made by John Gruden. On the plus side, you can't refire the man. So technically, it's only up here to from here, Las Vegas. How about you? You know, I'm sending with Las Vegas though for next year. Scariest proposition. Uh, mm. Now, boy, I got that, uh, excuse me, bull from Ed and Eddie on my face. <laughs> I just seen that mug in the camera. I said, well, this thing will start talking here in about 22 seconds. Good night. I'm going to say the scariest proposition for Las Vegas would be that Harry Reid would purchase them as a, uh, you know, parcel owner. Who that is? It's the senator from that state. Oh, or former senator from that state. Oh well, don't worry. He'll turn into a crap. Over you, you don't. You don't remember him. He's the one that come on TV with a black eye. <laughs> you don't. You don't remember this? No, not really. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> moving All on. Right. Well, Baltimore. Uh, what's this? Current events, yeah. Brandon. Jeez. Uh, yeah, I'm lost. I'm sorry. Moving on. I actually think Greed would coming back would be hilarious. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> scariest proposition He's for Baltimore. Back. You can't kill him. Fair enough. <laughs> like, scariest proposition for Baltimore, though, is obviously the Lamar Jackson going down. He is the heart and soul of that team, organization, and the entire Wrong. offense in Baltimore. Wrong. Okay. All right, what's Baltimore's scariest proposition they're going to next year? Adam Gase gets hired as head coach. <sighs> Thank you. Okay, luckily Jim Harbaugh is not going to get fired. <laughs> Thank but you. if he was, boy, if I was Lamar Jackson, I'd punch Adam Gates at the door and walk out. Like, I'm going to Pittsburgh. See y'all later. Y'all going to disrespect me like this in my house. I'm going to Pittsburgh playing with Tom. I win this one. That Yeah, that's yeah. utterly terrifying. Oh, good God. Yeah. You know what? He could be the, he could be the scariest proposition for every team. That's what I was going to say. That's yeah. my ace in the hole, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, Adam Gates coming back. Like, oh, my you God. You come up with whatever you want to. I got Adam Gates. Yeah. Yeah, he keeps that rabbit in the hole for sure. Jeez. Go ahead. What's next? I don't know that you got the picks from last week. Then what do you tell me what's next? Okay. Uh, so that's the scariest proposition going into the next year for those two teams. Yep. Yeah. Dang. You're right, man. That is pretty scary. Adam Gase, Lamar Jackson goes down. More they find scares. more emails from John Gruden, and Harry Reid becomes partial owner of the Las Vegas Raiders. That would be a. That's almost. That would be almost as bad as all the games that happened today. How they all played out. There was some, I mean, it was some decent games, though, but all of us in this room suffered a certain kind of heartbreak today. So it was, I'm a Washington fan. I'm used to heartbreak. I told Chris yeah. the same thing. He's like, a full experience. You know, he's on the federal investigation. He <laughs> he cut his kicker who's doing big things. Whoa, big whoa, 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 Okay. Kicker, fair. Went to, I'll let Chris talk about that. 
Fair enough. I'm actually excited to hear him talk about an athlete, know their name. All right. He, he get, he yes, I, yeah, but before like we get to that up. point, I, like, like, the federal investigation thing is pretty much over with. Um, yeah, I was telling Chris about this earlier today. Um, hey, I was listening to a podcast. I forgot the girl's name, Jessica something. Jessica Branch or Lisa Branch or something, who's the attorney for all the women who are accusing Dan Snyder and the Washington organization of misconduct. Mm-hmm. And Roger Goodell said he's not going to release, you know what I'm saying, the statements. You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, just because of the anonymity of the clients. And homegirl's like, well, I'm their attorney. Change their names and redact their names off the statements. It's, it's done all the time. That's gonna be, I don't think that situation is done. Oh, I, I think it is. There's a reason that John Gr- that um, Goodell doesn't want to release them because I think it's been proven that Snyder is innocent. Else, he would be more than happy to come out and bury that man. Maybe. Yeah, he's got no he's got no ties to to Snyder. He wants yeah. him going like as much as the next guy. I don't yeah. know the situation with him and Snyder. So and it's easy that. for the women's attorney to talk about. Oh. I, by all means, release him because you know that you've already agreed with this guy not to release him. So it's all just a, a horse and pony show for her. Like I'm going to thought pr- that was going with that. Whew. No, that's what it is. It's just a parade <laughs> show for her. Like, oh, I'm going to pretend like I really want this to get out, but we all know that you don't want it to get out because then yeah. you have no case. Oh, wait, you already don't have a case because it's not going anywhere. The only thing they found in months of investigating emails is John Gruden, who has nothing to do with Washington. I'm telling you, John Gruden, he fell on his like. I'm not saying he was right by no means. I'm saying he fell on the sword for a lot of folks. Uh, yeah. I'm saying that off the rip. Like, John Gruden should be out, but he fell on the sword for a lot of other people. That, and I got to fit in over the eight to 12 months it's going to come out. Yeah, don't worry, John. I still think you're a great coach. Okay, anyway. Just yeah, I got to get up out of here. Anyway, last Monday night's game, the Saints and the Hawks. And what about I, it? The Saints won by three, 10 to 13. It was a horrible game. I, I hate we had to. Uh, Suffer through that with Geno Smith and Jameis Winston. Um, I think you know, I made honestly, a mistake. Huh? I think I made a mistake on that one. Oh, would you? Oh, do? you did. Oh, you pick. Pretty sure I picked the Seahawks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You well, did. Oh uh, well, who picked who this week? You know, yeah. In this game, uh, this is what you get, Chris. <clears throat> this is what you get. You picked the Seahawks, and you didn't pick your own team. That's what you get. Yeah, I got a comment on that later. Yeah, Go wait ahead. till we get to the Bucks. Go ahead. <clears throat> Just saying. All right. Boop. Boop. Yeah, Boop. who picked who in that game? Me and you got New Orleans. We win. Okay. Either way, um, actually, America pick. lost. That was pathetic game, 10-13. <laughs> to 13. It was not an offensive showcase by no stretch of the imagination. The DK Metcalf had 184-yard pass in the first play of the game, had one more catch for 12 yards the rest of the game. Geno Smith, the only week I had to play him in fantasy, was like, I, yeah, I'm just going to crap all over this guy's team. I dropped Geno Smith on the waiver wire this week. He goes absolutely bonkers against the New Orleans. Welcome to my fantasy year. Hey, hey. So who's next on the slate here? Packers and the Cardinals. Um. So here I'm gonna tell you something though, back <clears> to <throat> Rodgers. Go ahead. He went in there with his top, um, had two wide receivers and uh, had Devontae Adams and MVS. I'm not pronouncing that man's last name is like Valdez uh, Scalding. Yeah, Scalding. Not it, yeah, not it. Play his last name is over twelve syllables. I, no, or letters. I'm not going for it. But anyway, he was down his left Whatever. tackle. I think multiple cornerbacks, his top two wide receivers, and his center, and he went on the road, you know what I'm saying, to Arizona and pulled out a win, man. Ned Flanders is bad, man. I did take the Packers plus the points. I did pick the Cardinals outright, however. Um, You did pick the Cardinals. Me and Chris, however, took the Packers. That's one piece. <laughs> yeah, boy, y'all – Yeah, hey, y'all some smart fellas. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you what, though. Chris had me confused for a minute because I'm over here looking at the, the prompter that tells us the next game to sell. Okay, so see, I'm not crazy. I see Beagles like, and Cardo. Like, I was like, where did that game never happen? I'm looking at my paper. I'm looking at this paper. I'm looking at this paper. I'm looking back. I'm like, wait checking my notes. I'm like, wait a minute now. I know good well. Yeah. I set up Thursday night and watched that game. I've been hoodwinked. <laughs> yeah. And bamboozled yeah. and straight running muck and all that good stuff. But good night. Sorry. Yeah. But so, in this game, it was the Bengals and the Jets. This was. Extremely unexpected. Extremely unexpected. What was unexpected about it? I'm going to tell you what's unexpected. First of all, the overall score. The overall score. (laughs) What was the overall score? Mike White. Uh, 65. (laughs) Yeah, that's the over under. Yeah. It was in the low 50s, though, if you, you know what I'm saying, to do that kind of thing. Take the over on this game. Yeah. How many of them was scored by the Jets, though, Crit? 34 by the Jets, 31 by the Bengals. What? The blank happened. I'm going to tell well, you what happened. I was going to say, I can tell you what happened too. Go ahead. It's Mike White. He threw for 405. 
four, zero, oh, and five. And his first ever start in the NFL. Who does that? You know who done that? Just Cam Newton in 2011. Hey, Mike. That's uh, in the history of the league. There's this burgundy and gold team somewhat south of you. I was waiting on him to make your sales pitch, and they're equally as bad as the Jets. <laughs> Just saying. No, no, hey. we have a better defense. Same record. Uh, uh, and, and we do. <laughs> hey, you got to take that. Yeah, oh, yeah. <sighs> All right. No, we do. Look, look at the name on the paper. All right. Uh, better That's defense. That's about it. And then we have some we have better wide receivers too, and, and we have a better running back. So if you can put four or five up on the Bengals, who have played pretty daggone good football, they all play, year. yeah, yeah. Because could you imagine what you could do year. with us? Yeah, the Bengals had a rough day today. It the was Jets hilarious. had a great day today. Well, we were yeah. all wrong. Oh, oh yeah, for, for sure. Because sure. <laughs> the BBB yeah. Yeah. was. I thought the Bengals had that all day. Bad, bad, and bad because the Bengals yeah. committed five or two. The Jets were two yeah. or four, and everybody was just like, well, the Jets have lost. And that's typically a good bet Sunday to Sunday. Excuse me, the Jets, <laughs> yeah, excuse me, come in one and five. They ain't the joke no more. It's still a joke. But I'm going to tell you something, though. If you're Zach Wilson right now and you just watched a Mike White come in and throw for four or five, ha ha. I'm not saying I'm that nervous. That was a lot of yards. I'm just saying. I'm a tick nervous because his first ever career start, you know, saying he throw, you know, saying for that much yards. So Michael Carter, his leading receiver, though, with 95 yards. Jamison Crowder next with 84 yards. Now, why we're here? You know why he threw for 405 yards? Because that man got some stones. You know why? Because he, he had nothing to lose. Well, did he sit out of one play? I know he he sit out of a couple plays because Josh Johnson had to come in because he got his bell rung okay. for a second. So he sat out for a couple plays and still got that many yards. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. he four or five. <sighs> What was his uh, completion percentage? You know, uh, I don't know right off. I look it up. Y'all carry uh, on. Anyway, out of forty-five passes, yeah, he only um uh, had uh had ninety completions, had eight incompletions. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Out of how many? Yeah, but over forty-five. Eight Dang. incompletions of forty-five. Dang, bro, that's that's, that's like a le- that's like eighty-nine percent completion. That rate. Is, that is like Tom Brady, Pat Mahomes last year, and and Aaron Rodgers level. Nah, bro, eighty. Nah, that's like eighty-eight, eighty-nine percent. I think it's like if he if, if he hit thirty seven out of forty five. All right, Krista, what's okay. the math on that? So uh, he had eighty two point two percent completions. There you go. Four hundred five yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. He had a one hundred seven point nine uh, well, rating today. Flat out, that's Brett Favre. I took the words out of my mouth. I, you know, hey, that's a better say. You got his two picks, four <laughs> all his tutties, and four hundred five yards. That's prime James hey, Winston hey, and Brett Favre look, right there. I like it. coming <laughs> off the field. He's gonna talk junk to whoever his backup is. I love it. But <laughs> going forward, what's the scariest of proposition? You know, what I'm saying no for the Jets. Adam Gates coming back. <laughs> you can't steal my. Fine. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. No, no, no. You went with it, Adam all Gates. Right. All right, Adam Gates. Let's see. That's gonna be everybody's. Mm. Mm. Dwayne Hassis becomes their quarterback. Oof. That is pretty bad. Yeah. Have right, him suit up. First of all, to see him in green would be bad. Then to see him as a starting quarterback would be bad, too. All right. How about the Bengals? Could be, what would be worst case this. scenario for the Bengals? Mine's easy. Yep. Oh, God. Joe Burrow getting hurt again. That's, that's, could be that's a, exactly uh, what I was going to say. They lose Joe be, Burrow. I honestly, I honestly think, I honestly think something worse. What's that? It, it could be worse. And that is? Wait for it. Who are we kidding? Nothing could be worse, bro, than Joe Burrow going down. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I was waiting too. Yeah, like, I was like, like, I don't dude. know what's worse than that if I'm a Bengals fan. <laughs> that could be. I mean, a lot of bad Adam stuff Gage could happen. Like, uh, like you know, Chase could go down, Higgins could go down. A lot of bad stuff could happen, but the worst thing that could happen would be to lose Joe Burrow and all that moxie. I like Joe, man. I do too, bro. I want to smoke a cigar and drink dude. some whiskey with him. Well, he probably want to drink some whiskey after you know what I'm saying, having a jet today. Congratulations, White. That's pretty awesome. Four oh five off the yep. So their He's score, the player of Sunday, by the way. Their score was thirty one thirty four. The mm-hmm. next game was thirty four thirty one. Shut up, Chris <laughs> Mark. Uh, oh, was that the Titans and the Colts game? <laughs> it was. Hey, who come out on top? Titans. Who? Titans thirty four thirty one. Say it one more time. Titans thirty four thirty one. Not the Colts. Hey, hey, with them ears, I know you heard him. <laughs> <laughs> They're stopped up with these little. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to get cute up here, boy. You know my feelings yeah, are hurt. Giants, so I'm tell you something. <laughs> Carson Wentz. I like Carson Wentz. I truly do. He played a good game. But sometimes our coach and Frank Wright, who I love and adore, has some play calling. I'm just going to call them struggles that I cannot get behind as an Indianapolis Colts fan. Jonathan Taylor, though, is a top – I think he's a top five running back in the league. 
If not, he's top 10. He's a solid top 10, no debate to me. We are down Hilton and Campbell. We have Doolin. Now, Michael Pittman. And that's pretty much it in the third quarter. And he just, and he wants to throw. And here's Zach Pascal. And he wants to throw and throw and throw and throw. It's like, bro, you know Carson, you know, he he's Brett Favre-esque. He's going to blank it up. We're at the five yard line. Yeah, you gotta hand that rock off, bro. We're in it's like a minute and a half left. It's our ball, a tie game. And we're at the five yard line. It's shotgun. That's your first mistake, in my opinion. Two. He gets pressured up the gut. He's about to get sacked. That's bad enough because that's a safety because it's in the end zone, right? And that's two points. And yeah. then get the ball. Yeah. So, hypothetically speaking, it could be nine or ten points. He throws a pick uh-huh. with his left hand. Now, mind you, he's a right-handed quarterback. Right, right. What's he doing throwing it left-handed? I don't know. That's the question. He had a, a lapse in judgment. <laughs> but I'm tired of <laughs> he that. He forgot mess, he man. was right-handed? <laughs> well, no, he had to switch hands, you know what I'm saying, just to get rid of it. He was trying to throw it away. Uh-huh. I get the premise. Yeah, well, there's other ways to do that. F, though, for the execution portion of it. I'd rather than just take the sack or spike the ball into the ground. You were outside of it, just spike it to the ground. That granite, you know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of men over top of you. These men are heavy. They're big. They're strong. I get it. It spurred a moment thinking. And then he comes back and leaves the drive downfield and ties the game. That's all well and good. That's great. But at the same time, he going into overtime. Pass, pass, pass. Punt. Pass, pass, pass. Pick. Not one time does our coach go, hey, Hey, Brandon Smith is back. Quentin Nelson's back. Jonathan Taylor's in the backfield. Hand the ball off. He's like, nope, huck it, chuck it. Run the ball, for God's sakes. Yeah, but we're three and five. <clears throat> That's better than two and six. I'm just I'm sorry. Mathematically speaking, you were correct. Somebody but I know right is now, that. You know? <laughs> our season is pretty much over. It, it's not. Three and five ain't over. In our division, it's over. They're six and two. We're three and five, and you we've lost both head to heads. We've lost both <sighs> head to heads. Mathematically, it's a wrap. Call it. Next week, have Carson go down there with some mysterious injury. Don't say nothing. And the following week, have Quentin Nelson go out with a mysterious injury. Don't say nothing. And just each, you know, hey, hey, every other week, just pop somebody off the roster who's a, you know. High level player, Darius Linda. We just keep Darius. losing people to mysterious injuries. I don't know what's going on. Everybody got a cramp and a muscle ache in their back hurts. And they ain't getting no better. Yeah, I don't know what's going on over here. But Jesus Christ, I'm sick of it, Frank Wright. All worst case scenario, you're moving into the next season. Carson Wentz getting hurt again. That's my the professional um, the opinion on that. We're halfway mm. professional. Carson Wentz being hurt and no wide receiver one or two. I think Pittman's a solid one. He had 86 yards on 10 catches and two touchdowns. That's number one wide receiver in the NFL. All right, what's your scariest proposition? For Indianapolis? Yeah, though, for my team going into next year. Mine's Wentz and no receiver. Well, Hurt went. Uh, I honestly think the worst thing that could happen to them would be Indianapolis losing Jonathan Taylor. They can afford to lose wins. Thank God he's on a rookie contract, and it cannot happen. But no, no, I mean, oh, like, like going down. Oh injury, God, that'd yeah. Be a, oh yeah, that'd be a disaster. The tight one is easy. Yeah. Losing Derrick Henry. Yeah, you take Derrick Henry away, they're almost next to nothing offensively. I mean, Tannehill is a decent quarterback, but anybody who watches the Titans and who I do sadly but surely, you know, what I'm saying, watch your enemy. You know, Tannehill who gets a lot of his numbers just you know, hey, based off. A loaded box in one on ones with Julio Jones, who was out there doing Antonio Bryant across the middle. Not knocking him, you know what I'm saying? They'll make it do what it do, but yeah, Kimmy go down. It's a whole different ball game in Tennessee, but they're going to run away there with all division. Unfortunately, this year, our season's over. Start resting players, Frank. It's a wrap, baby. The three and five, it's over. I think the worst thing that can happen in Tennessee is Taylor Swift comes out as a fan. Oof. Yeah, that's not good. Personally. Anyways, yeah, think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Pretty bad. She's going to write a song about you. 
She's going to talk about You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It could be bad. Anywho, let's take a quick break. Here we're from our sponsor. Thank you, Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment, for sponsoring this hour of 3rd and 8 here on Nextdoor Radio at nextdoorradio.com during this spooky Halloween season. When we get back, we're going to continue talking about our picks and how we stacked up against one another right now. Right now. I'm up one. It doesn't help because I was down nine, but I'm up one. Oof. You look at LeBron throughout the season. You yep. see his hairline disappearing. In the movie Space Jam. Crispy, dog. Dude. He took one of them steel edgers and just went like, right across the floor. And now, back to third and eight. Hey, guys, and welcome back here to Throwing It In on Next Door Radio or nextdoorradio.com. It's our <laughs> Halloween edition, as we stated, and as I stated in the segment one, in case you missed it. I'm a positive pregnancy test. That's absolutely uh, terrifying. Jason's a disappointed Washington fan. That's true. I don't know what Chris is yet. We ain't decided. Disappointed Washington fan. Join the crowd. <laughs> yeah, there's a group of us apparently. Huh? Yeah. Hey, hey Mitchell loves company. You know what I'm not disappointed about? What? Kirk Cousins to Adam Thielen take the lead. 7 0. Here we go. Ah! Woo! Okay. Prime time, baby. Yeah, well, he's playing Cooper Rush, not Dak Prescott. I don't, so I don't, hey, I don't want to hear. I told you Dak Prescott wasn't going to play. I told you he was more hurt than what they let on. And I told you what was going to happen to him without him. They're going to lose. They're going to fall off. Oh, yeah, lucky terrible, for right? them. Lucky for them. Washington can't win a game. Lucky for oh. them. The Eagles suck. And luckily for them, the Giants, Giants. are equally as bad. Yeah. So they could probably win like Way to go, game Dallas. win the division. Yeah. <laughs> they could, they could Congratulations. Be, yeah, they could be multiple games in the 500 and come out on top. And Joke is on it. me for yeah. thinking the NFC least was going to be anything but. <laughs> That's why it's called that I'm laughing at myself. He's, I'm laughing at myself. Well, you want to talk about a laughing matter. This is this Houston Texans game today against the Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> Chris made a comment in the third quarter. Hey, are they going to go scoreless? <laughs> and then the Texans routed off. Hey, how many points straight, Chris? 22, I believe. They went boom, 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 boom. Hey. And couldn't score the rest of the game. So the final score is not that bad. 38-22. Davis but Mills, huh? Was, Rams on top. They, it was that and nothing at one point. And Houston was like, well, I guess we do. I guess I do get paid Tuesday. Might as well go and finish the game off. And yeah. that's what happened. The Houston Texans are an abomination of football. Uh, they should put them in the SEC and bring up Alabama. Wrong. Soccer style, in my opinion, I think the Houston Texans are the worst franchise after the Detroit Lions. This is scarce proposition of Houston real quick while we're here. One is probably massage parlors going out of business in Houston. <laughs> <laughs> Two is having a hold on to Watson and not having a trade partner to buy. I want to say it's Tuesday. That's what I was going to say. The trade deficit, not meeting, not meeting the trade deadline. Sorry, not meeting the trade deadline would be the worst case scenario for them. Yeah, but it's my understanding they've opted to not trade. I don't at least think, not trade him. Well, they were talking about yeah. Christian McCaffrey with a couple picks, but then they said they wanted some defensive guys from the Panthers. I, I said know. this last year. As soon as everybody was talking about Washington just getting on the battery, and this was pre-scandal, Christian McCaffrey is not worth as much as Watson. Franchise quarterbacks last between 7 and 12 years on average. These running backs, Christian McCaffrey, he ain't played a full season in three seasons. Get him on the Not his fault. They run him to death. That is my point. That's why you need to bank on a franchise quarterback over a running back. Get Christian McCaffrey on up out of there. I don't want to see him go to Houston. Just to be fair to him, I think he's a phenomenal running back when healthy. He's probably the best in the game when healthy. Go ahead. Get him out. Get him out of there. He come put on that burgundy and go whenever he wants to. I seen how players will get hurt around y'all's way. He probably wanna stay with Shut him. Shut up. Yeah, that field is terrible, though. Hey, he, hey, you know who who he looked good beside? Who? Dalvin Cook in that purple and gold, too. <sighs> That'd be the most unstoppable run game of Would all it time. not, boy? You can put Dalvin at fullback and Christian McCaffrey running Ooh. back in, boy. Just run the wishbone. Kirk, Kirk, man. Nah, Kirk with the split back behind him. God oh. almighty. Yeah. Oh, boy, that'd be error. Go I ahead, Matt Rule. That. Go yeah. ahead. Because <laughs> you got a receiver at running back and a running back at running back. 
Well, that's a fair point. Yeah, you know good luck I mean? to you, player. Like, good luck, guy. And so here's the, and then you got Thielen and Jefferson. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. The best up there defending that. Here the Rams go. Um, they ain't lost a one game and eight all year long. Worst Obviously, case for them, I got it. Right here. Fire away, Leroy. The league comes back and finds uh, an abnormality. Took me a minute. In the trade deal that they did with uh, Detroit. Yeah. And they're forced to reverse it. And send back Jared and Goff. And Jared Goff comes back hey, as a quarterback. I'm not even going to try to top that. Horrible. That would, that <laughs> would obliterate Stan Kroenke. You want to talk about the witching hour, boy? God. Woo. Yeah. Yeah, that'd That's be bad. bad luck for them boys. But mm. Houston's 1-7. Happy Halloween. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? Boy, Merry Christmas, too, to Detroit. But, uh, <laughs> hey, Owens, yeah, yeah, he lived on another day. But yeah, Campbell would love game. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. But Houston's 1-7. Rams had the reverse record. They lost one of their games. 1-7, I think, you know, Matt Stafford is going to finish top three MVP. I've been, that's a drum I've been hammering since day one under Sean McVay. He was going to look, you know, how he was supposed to look in Detroit. He's been a phenomenal football player. But Calvin Johnson couldn't even win in Detroit. Barry Sanders couldn't even win in Detroit. That's I'm not true. On that, Stafford, that's, hey, that's the truth, bro. They Barry were, Sanders couldn't win? Yeah, Matthew Stafford yeah. had no chance because Barry Sanders at the top. Probably the greatest back. Of all. I, I know somebody's going to say Walter Payton, and that's fair. You could argue Barry, Walter, Emmett, God. Oh, well, like Bo I Jackson. Even, I wouldn't even put Emmett or Bo in the same category as Barry or Walter, but they're close seconds. Yeah, I mean, everybody got their own opinion. But you're not yeah. going to argue with nobody yeah. about them four. Nah, huh. Those four, they're in the top five, regardless of what era or, you know, you know, order you want to put them in. Those are four in the top five. But, I mean, I wouldn't consider them the same as John Riggins or Lil Joe Washington or anything like that, but they're good. They're good bags. All right, player, I'll let you have it. <laughs> nah, go ahead. Steelers and the Browns, man. Um, um, oh, uh, yeah, did anybody pick Houston last game? No. Okay, yeah, we're not that bad yeah. off. I figured as much. No. All yeah, right. No, 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 no. I like Davis and all that, but no. Uh-uh. He did okay in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. He did. Yeah, he That's did. fine. He learning. He learning. It's good. It's fine. I mean, he's not a bad player. No, he got through to the wolves, brother. Like, the bad wolves. I was going to say, like, I don't think you could put really – and, like, Washington, as good as he is, lost 12 games last year, though, in that same organization. Can I say it again? And Washington's a top five quarterback, though, by most people's measurables. At worst, he's top eight. Yeah. He lost 12 games in that franchise last year. Yeah. I mean, him and DeAndre Hopkins, you know, Miracles usually 10 and 6, 9 and 7, 8 and 8 most years. Miracles take some help. You know what I mean? Somebody's got to wave the stick around, you know, call down the fire. It takes somebody. Like it, it needs people. And right now, they are. Yeah. They uh, ain't got the people less. Yeah, nah, huh? Ain't nobody They leave. even traded Mark Ingram back up, you know what I'm saying, to New Orleans this week. Like, he was the one player you had of note on the offense outside of Brandon Cooks, and you're like, all right, player, then we don't need you. Get on up out of here. Why? Yeah. I mean, I understand why, because you're one of seven, and everybody know what you're doing. Y'all tanking. You're not fooling. You're tanking. In the wrong, in the wrong year to tank. I was about to point, swear to God, no kidding. I'm about to say, and it ain't no top flight quarterbacks. Because no. Rattler and Murray. Sam, or, Hall, Sam Howell's was, your best caliber quarterback, God and he has went down in draft stock this year because Carolina looking kind of suspect. I mean, Carolina defense, boy, couldn't stop a nose. No, no. Digits. But honestly, Sam is probably the best quarterback in that draft class, you know, of the big names. Yeah. And, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tank for him. No. He would have been a solid third rounder last year. I mean, in that class, he'd have definitely had to go yeah. second, late second. Yeah, I, I mean, class. I think third, yeah, yeah, all day. Second, third, maybe. Yeah, second on a good day. But yeah, nah. Nah, you tanking at the wrong time. See, this is your problem, Houston. You just Houston, don't we think. got a problem. Yeah, you don't think, man. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. Anyways, yeah, go ahead. He's a cheap one. Steelers and the Browns. All right, Chris, what's the score for that, please, if you don't mind my kind, sir? <clears throat> that was 15 Steelers, 10 Browns. Yeah, I couldn't say the 15. I didn't talk <sighs> myself. But <laughs> the Browns ain't the same without Baker Mayfield. Actually, Baker Mayfield played today, and I'm gonna tell you that's why they lost. Wrong. They're they are not the same without Baker Mayfield. What happened was Case Keenum put on the mask that is oh, Baker Mayfield, and he oh, came so out on the field and played you. like a backup. Gotcha. When Case Keenum was winning last week, it was Baker Mayfield, and this week the right. lost. It was okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. That was the Halloween. No, you know that was stupid though. What? Why? Why did you force yourself back, Baker? I don't. That, that don't, was point out. Don't, don't let the money. Don't let the money drive you to do stupid things. Somebody's going to pay you. I about to say he's going to get his money either way. Yeah, if the Browns are not intelligent enough to keep you, not that there's anybody better out there that they can get right now outside, unless they going to work out a magic trade deal for Watson. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Who? Who are they? Go- They're going to have to pay you, bro. You go anywhere. You you go to Washington and get your money. 
You can go Texas down to Houston and get your money. There's plenty of places you can go get your money. They even got good massage parlors down there. Yeah, you can get old up and everything. Jesus Christ! Just saying, <laughs> you don't. Have, I would not have done what I did today. You what you you thought you took a calculated risk, I and you a did, risk, right. and you lost on it because you one you could have re-injured your shoulder. Stupid. In a contract year at that. Just yeah. Carry on. And two, the worst of the worst, you could have come out there and lost that game. And guess what you did? Lost the game. You went out there and lost the game. Y'all scored 10 points at home against Pittsburgh, who's been an atrocious defense all year. The Big Ben threw a touchdown on you, which Big Ben's threw like nine touchdowns, seven picks this year. He's been atrocious. And then you lost at home. What I will tell you. Over. It's a wrap for Cleveland. Is that, you know, Brandon, you were wrong again. Oh, okay. Chris Alver was right. <clears throat> so was I. So I picked right. the Steelers. Mm-hmm. Go me. Yeah. Well, I'm Chris one ga- is running. Dogs I'm one game on ahead <laughs> of you. I'm one game ahead of you, Chris. You're ahead of me and, now. And two ahead of him. Just no, no, for the and, week or in this week, brother. Okay, yeah. Nine, yeah. nine more from now, I might get yeah. me tired. Yeah, he's this, trying to make himself sound good. Yeah. He know the deal in the yeah. overall season. We know <laughs> this week was going to look rough. Oh yeah, me and Chris talking. We were like, oh, this is going to be a disaster this week. But going forward, what's the scariest proposition though for Cleveland? I got one, and it's going. It's probably going to be the same as yours. Trying to hit this quarterback cycle all over again, though, if you lose Becker to the injury or payment. I feel like y'all were – and then you had a hot discussion last week on how much you pay Baker. I went back and thought about it. Pay the man. He's not a top-10 quarterback. You have to pay him top-10 money. That's all Because you, you did make an interesting point. I don't think Baker's a top-10 talent. I don't. I don't even think – I don't he, think he is either. He's a middle-of-the-road quarterback. He he's is. great for that system. Like number but, 15, 16. Perfect. But he – you know, Cleveland had no winning until he got there. You're forced to pay that man that money. That end, there is no such thing as middle money for a quarterback. That's it's true, you yeah. either pay it or you or you go get a rookie or a backup. Yeah, because Colin Cowherd made that same point this week, and he did it in a longer-winded fashion than you. Man, I was like, yeah, Jason probably right about that. Like, it is that, you know, obviously it's like buying a house. It's market money. You know what I'm saying? Market value what is, is what you're going to pay. It's like so what are you going to do? You going to keep franchise tagging it for 40 a year? Or yeah. 45, whatever it is now? Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, you don't want to do all that. Yeah. <laughs> That's stupid. Who a year at a time. If I was Baker, I'd love that. Go ahead. I mean, what Kirk got rich off of that, bro. I better say, <laughs> that's what I'm say. There was a quarterback who done that. Like, not too long ago, yeah. it was just franchise tag. Got the franchise tag. Kirk, Kirk bro. Cousins. And then Minnesota paid him the money, all the money Twice. at the time. Twice. Hey, hey, say what you want to about my boy in his prime time. But in that prime time, he won. Hey, I he told you. big, boy. I wish more quarterbacks had the gumption or stone to do what he did. Yeah. Go get paid. You like that? Like exactly. <laughs> Cam Newton, he could have set, he could have reset the entire quarterback market when he could've. was a free agent in Carolina. Instead, he signed a five year hundred million dollar deal, which at the time was a bargain for Cam. It was. You know what I'm saying? With Cam Prime, 100 million, seeing you know Pat Mahomes get 500 million, he was not five times better than Cam Newton was at that point in his career. Was not doing. I love Pat, and I'm not a big fan of Cam, but five times better than somebody is Pat Mahomes and Zach Wilson. It ain't Zach and oh, uh, or excuse me, Cam and Pat in promise. But hey, moving on. See, I'll um, tell you what, yeah. what I will, what I think about all that. We can. Okay. Hey, one second, real quick, though. That way I don't forget. Scariest proposition of Pittsburgh going into next year. Uh, yeah, they re sign Roethlisberger. Took it from me. I was going to say, just let him go. He's, <laughs> he's like the woman you've been married to for 20 years that's helped you raise two magnificent kids but steals your money off the dresser every night that when you go to sleep on Fridays after you get paid. Mm-hmm. It's time to just let her go. You, He got you them two rings. He's raised your two kids. It's time to let him go and be free, Mike Tomlin. You should have drafted the quarterback five years ago. Instead, you're stuck with Duck Hodges and Dwayne Haskins who are both bums and need to get on up out of there themselves. Find you a new quarterback. I hate to tell you, player, this ain't the draft. You know who I see going up there? Oh, I told you. I told you who's going up there. A. A. Ron Rodgers is going up there. But I don't know how the Packers playing right now. Yeah, that's kind of a thing. I don't think he's going. You know what? They might make a play for Jordan Love. Go ahead. No. You know who I think would do well in their program? It has that blue collar, hard work, just will take the beating. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can get a guess. All right. Give me five choices and I'll see if I can pick him out. Okay. Seriously. All right. All right. I'm going to close the current current market, guys. Let yep. me give you three. Okay. Let's go. Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay. Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is the one. Yeah, it is. The Jimmy one. G's a pretty California yeah. boy, not being funny. Yeah. Gardner Minshew. I he can would see that. fit, I dude. Could, yeah. Especially with the mullet and the steel work. Yeah. Stand on, fantastic yes. boy. Yes. Oh, man. I love him. I think his personality would fit in up there. 
Yeah. Because he is, yeah. He was a really good quarterback in Jacksonville. But like, I'm kind of glad he got sent on up out of there, too, to be real with you, because I didn't want to see that man twice a year for five years. No, he's good, dude. He He's that That's a good Tony point. Romo-ish, like, I just make things crazy, things happen, and I, I don't know I think he went to the same how, school as Romo, too, by the way. Just saying. Oh, back so. to the – oh, uh, whoa, worst case scenario for the uh, Browns, we already did that. All right, so the money deal. Everybody talk about, look, it's either all the money or none of the money. Here's why. People want to say, well, Tom Brady, he wins championships because – he gives the money up to get other players. Yeah. That's partially true. He's at a different level in his career. Yeah, he can do that. He's chasing all-time great records. Yeah, and Tom's wife is, is you know, has more He's money loaded. Yeah, and I, I appreciate I've even, I've been one of the guys to say it. He gives up money so he can get great receivers and stuff like that. But the reason he can do that is because of where he's at in his career. Oh, yeah, for sure. And he's trying to get that eighth, maybe ninth, if we're eighth. And Brandon's not where, worst case scenario for Brandon, his 10th. Yeah. All right. At 45. Hey, he gets 10. Yeah. If Tom Brady gets 10 rings, he's the best professional athlete of all time in any sport, plain and simple. I think he knocks that out with his next one. Yeah, tell you. It's getting harder you know, to debate yeah. that, but go ahead. Yeah, it is hard. Moving on, Eagles and the Lions. Oh, boy. Tell us what happened in this one, Chris. Oh, and lived <laughs> on, brother. Oh, boy. Uh, <clears throat> Eagles 44. Mm. Lions. Six. Now, the Eagles dropped a 40-piece on him, and their quarterback threw for 103 yards and no touchdowns. What the blank? It's a Jared Goff effect. Jared Goff is so bad that I feel bad for Dan Campbell. I used to think he was a decent quarterback, but I, I'm going to shut my mouth about that guy because, God, Dan Campbell wasn't lying, bro. Yeah. You know who got this game right? You and Chris? No. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Chris. This is the one I tried to get cute at because I said Owen was going to die today. Boy, yeah. Owen may live on the rest of the season. He I'm lived on. You, if the Lions, <laughs> honestly, if the Lions, you know, had a game to steal right here, this was the one. Chris, you just keep stressing out. This, <laughs> Chris, you know. <laughs> I don't know what his secret I, is. I don't have the, the historical context that you guys have. I'm telling you, it must he's be He's living that. in the moment. Yeah, he's living he in the moment. He is living in the moment. That's a smart man. That's, that's brilliant. If Bart Scott had two touchdowns. <laughs> Worst case scenario for touchdowns. the Lions. Jared Goff <laughs> finds a way to stay. Worst case scenario for the Lions is that they're still an NFL franchise next year. That's worst case for them. God. Boy, that's worst case for Detroit. That's not really a line. That whole city's a dumpster fire. <laughs> it is. included. Start but, with the main. <laughs> nah, go ahead. I do agree with that. Hey. But, hey, the only hey, winless team like, in the look, NBA is the Detroit Pistons. The only winless team in the NFL is the Detroit Lions. It is just a disaster. Fire everybody in the whole town of Detroit, except the blue-collar folks at the steel workers and, the, you know, hey, automotive plants. And, and common folks keep their jobs. Sports athletes, they get on up out of there. Time to go. I should have done that in a more eloquent manner, but is what Eagles did. just ran the ball and killed clock on the day, man. That was just worst case the for the Eagles, though. Seriously, I don't know. I'll, you tell me first. Go first. Ooh, Let me think. Worst about case it. for the Eagles, to be honest. Oh, I, I know one. I got one. I don't uh-huh. think Sirianni is their coach of the future. He's the coach, former offensive coordinator. I'm not sold on Nick Sirianni as a head coach. I think moving forward, y'all gonna have to find somebody who's a veteran. But if they keep, you know, hey, trying to roll on, you know, obviously it's the lines today. You know what I'm saying? But if they rack off eight, nine wins, I mean, it's a solid season in Philadelphia, though, by their standards, I think. Worst case scenario for the Eagles, in my in my mind, would be that they retain their program inside of Philadelphia. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That's got to be the wor- wor- worst case for them. And and here's the bad part. It's, ha- it's half the fans that tell you that. Ugh. Like, we are just a bad city in general. But our sports fans are atrocious. And I'm telling you, like, I know people from there – and they'll tell you, like, we're just. It's crazy it to me how different to just a few miles. It's not even like an hour and a half, two hours difference, Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. I mean, I'd be mad, too, if I was a little brother in my own state. And Pittsburgh's up there winning titles, and I habitually suck at every just sport. Just saying, man. God, you could, dude, who would have thought people could be that different in such a close proximity to one another? Oh, I can tell you. Now, you want to save this next game until after break? Nah, let's hit it up. Are you sure? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, hey, producer, how much time we got? We got a minute and a half. Yeah, we got enough. We good. Fair San enough. Francisco and Chicago. Crystal, what's the score on that one? <clears throat> San Francisco, 33. Chicago Bears, 22. Y'all know my worst case scenario was saying these scores. Because <laughs> I think the day that like, everybody just scores stuff, I couldn't say it. I'm just like, uh, no, nah, I'm good. Appreciate you. Worst San case Fran, scenario for San Fran. This is a tough one. I, I got one. I got it, too. But go ahead. I'm see if we agree. I think the worst case scenario for them would be if Shanahan leaves. 
That's interesting because I've heard a lot of interesting comments about Kyle Shanahan the past couple weeks about how, you know, having Jimmy G, he's a very good head coach. And without Jimmy G, he's like way under 500, like under 40% winning percentage. And I'm like, you take a starting quarterback away from 90% of NFL yeah, head coaches. That's coach, not fair. It's going to be the same that's, way. That's not a fair state. That's, that's ignorance. The scariest proposition, you know, obviously in my opinion for San Fran is Jimmy G going down there with another injury. Mm. Is, well, that's uh, going to happen. That's not at a some point. Yeah. yeah, that's not if it's win in Jimmy G's case. Justin Fields had his best day as a pro. He had 103 yards in the ground. He had the best player Sunday to me and Chris. Me and Chris sitting there watching him had a fourth and one. He scrambled all in the backfield. He juked seven tackles. I counted seven open tackles. You know, he made San Fran miss and scored a touchdown. A buck or three on the ground. Worst case scenario for Chicago, Matt, Matt Nagy. Nagy. That's it. That's it. That's a consensus And with that, we're going to take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. Thank you to (laughs) Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment for sponsoring this hour. Third night here on Nextdoor Radio, nextdoorradio.com during our Halloween special. Uh, Yeah, McNaggy's pretty scary. When we get back, we're going to finish talking about our picks and jump right into our picks for next week. Tell me something else that happened in Arizona. It's not even a great fraud. There's something you feed a hummingbird and a fat one to death. There's a substance there that resembles This is the stuff that just made soda. after they made hot dogs. Third and eight is back. Hey guys, hey, welcome back here to Third and Eight on Next Radio, Next Radio. Com. Ooh. It's a Halloween edition. And, uh,. It's some more scary stuff going on in Atlanta today, man. Uh, yeah, like the Panthers winning the game they should have yeah, won. That's terrifying. That's uh, way to go, with Falcons. What's more terrifying is uh, the both quarterbacks pulled a tour and threw them for under one fifty. <laughs> Matt Ryan and Sam Donald. Yeah. Um, it's bad in Carolina. Even even after a victory, you know, obviously pulling y'all to the four and four and five hundred on the year, and Falcons are three and four. Carolina is just a steaming hot pile of mess. That mm. final score was 19-13. Yeah. Panthers on top. That is an odd score in football to me. There is not one single bright spot on Carolina's team outside of a couple players on defense and DJ Moore. Yeah. I also saw Robbie Anderson die today on the field. I think that was the worst hit of Sunday. I'm pretty sure that man's oh. going to wake up at Thanksgiving and not know what year it is, where he comes from, and he might forget the entire playbook by the Panthers because that was the – was that the one that knocked the ball out, too? Not in a smooth out. When I said at the same time as the uh, – hey, comment said, hey, that was a clean hit, bro. It just hurt. He did. <laughs> I mean, same time I said, hey, that was clean. And here comes the commentator. Well, that's one of the hardest clean hit shows here today. Yep. I'm like, no, bro, he knocked my man in the next week. <laughs> I see you Thanksgiving, Robbie Anderson. Mm. <sighs> it didn't affect – he still didn't catch it. He ain't caught none of you. He couldn't catch – boy, I started to say something terrible on this radio. General. <laughs> he couldn't catch a cold at the lake. You know what I'm saying? The winter time right now. That man can't catch nothing. Boy, I had a bad one I wanted to say, too, and I almost let it slip again. But anyway. We'll talk about it on break. Yeah, hey, somebody had to win 1913, as Chris pointed out. Jason, my scariest proposition for Carolina is Christian McCaffrey, his health in general. Overall, Christian McCaffrey's entire, his body of health is the scariest proposition, in my opinion. How about you? Fire away. David Tepper remains the owner. Ooh. No, you don't like stuffed peppers? Mm, nah. Stuffed peppers? Nah. Oh, why not? I don't like him. I don't like his style. I don't like his vision. I don't like the fact that he's two faced. He's gonna go out there and tell the whole world that he's not gonna, you know, he's not gonna allow sexual harassment on his team. He's gonna talk junk about everybody else where they were going through these allegations. And then who's he trying to trade for? Oh, Deshaun Watson. A, a Mr. What? Sexual harassment scandal. Oh, eat them donuts and cookies. I just can't. I want you to come out and and make it just. 
sell sell how this is no i'm gonna tell right you straight up. level <laughs> it's not and i'm gonna tell you something straight up right now though everybody who's listening on this show and everybody who's you know hey ever watched five nfl games can tell you past winning in the nfl don't nothing else matter bro and i'm Bill's all right been with accused that of it twice i'm on the all field. right with that if you stand by I, it. If you stand by like I'm not saying it's right. Yes, don't I'm, temper. Don't come out and talk, throwing shade at every other owner and every all the other quarterbacks and the people who's had allegations against yeah, them. Yes, I love Peter and Michael Vick. I, you, I ain't going to tolerate that in my, in, in my organization. And within five years, five years, not even. That's I being generous. To be honest yeah. You're going to come out and be like, you're going to try to work. Now, of course, you haven't come on TV and said you want Watson because yeah. you think somehow that people don't understand who's really going for him. But let's say they accept this trade deal that you're offering. Yeah, that's allegedly. I, I, I can't wait. You What are you going to do, just avoid interviews for the next two years? Hey, he's an NFL owner. He probably could and get away with it. I mean, he's still out he of better. the fans' money. I would, too, if I was him. I'd be ducking crowds left and right there if I put myself in that predicament. But, Honestly, Man. that's going to be yeah, him nah. at that point. No thanks. Take your two Facebook. I mean, you're going to come in and throw shade at the it. old owner and then do and then do this. Like, no. Nah. You know what I find hilarious about Jerry Richardson, which obviously him going out wasn't funny. The man put a statue of himself Love outside it. the stadium. Hey. And everybody was making fun of him. I'm like, you know what? If I had Jerry, uh, Jerry Richardson money, I can say I would do the same thing. Like, that's about, what I would nah, do. Look, let me see, I, I don't even need Jerry Rich some money. I, he know who he reminded me of? He reminded me of Huey, Huey Long. It's like a 1940s politician. You ever watch the movie All the King's Men? Huey yeah. talking about, and I'm going to uh, build me a bridge across the great Mississippi, and I'm going to name it after myself because I'm the one who built it. He built himself a statue because I mean, he's the one who built the Panthers. Like I said, fair I'm enough. All right I, with it. I can't say he was in the right about what he did. I'm saying I would too probably None of my business. Yeah. None of my business. That's what people need to get real quick. None of my business. None of my business. Am I a part owner of the Panthers? No. Then it's none of my business. I mean, I would like to be though they up for sale. Yeah. But what's your scary I, mean, I mean, they want to <laughs> throw some you sweat equity my way. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I got five on it. <laughs> uh, how you feel about the Atlanta Falcons? What's the scariest proposition going, you know, um, going in the next season for them? Because I got a good one. No Matt Ryan. Because what you going to do? <sighs> These teams are aging quarterbacks. Mm. Now, Matt Ryan's not playing near as bad as Big Ben is. Actually, Matt Ryan's having a pretty decent year right now. I'm just saying, the boy or – you know what I'm saying? He was drafted a long time ago. He had 12 touchdowns and four picks. That's you know pretty what? good. Here's the way I feel about Atlanta. He's, yeah. Here's the way I feel about He's Atlanta. You get exactly what you deserve. It's for really getting just, rid of Dan Quinn. It's really just who's being very Outside of this game, had a very successful season in Dallas. Yeah. They're going to lose tonight in Minnesota. But outside of that, had a very successful season thus far in Dallas. And I think he will continue to be successful in Dallas, which really – I dislike a lot. Thanks a lot, Atlanta. I still think that Dan Quinn. But you Quinn, get what you deserve, bro. Yeah, you I threw him under Dan, the bus. I still think Dan Quinn is better as a DC, you know, hey, over a head coach. But everybody's got their niche. Because some guys are better as OCs and DCs versus the head coach. Magnag is a good are. example. Uh, oh, he, he is prime example. Good God. He's yeah. example one, two, and Great six. Great OC. Just not, not a good. One, two, and good. six is Matt Nagy. But to me, the scariest thing that could happen for Atlanta is that. Uh, they change uniforms because that's the only thing they got going for them right now. Those new uniforms look amazing. Yeah, I mean, I do like Atlanta's uniforms. I See what I'm good. saying? Could you imagine changing that, the only thing that's winning in your organization? I mean, oh. you lost to my team. How you lose to my team? <laughs> that's embarrassing. Speaking of winning and losing, who picked who in this one? Well, we all picked the Falcons. We all picked the Falcons. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Carolina. Y'all, y'all disappoint regardless of the situation. You guys yeah. can't even lose. You can't even just work with <laughs> us a little bit. Like, yeah. no, honestly, like y'all can't even suck right. G- Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, here comes like, an interesting one. I had a good one there too, but I let it go. Whew. Here comes an interesting one. Miami Prince, Dolphins minute, boy. and the <laughs> Buffalo Bills. Mm. Who did we? Who? What was the score, Chris? Okay, so the score on that one was eleven to twenty six. Bills a, on top. Another weird score. But let me tell you something. I'm actually proud of the way Miami's defense played yet again. Did you get to see any of that game? No, I didn't watch it. You want to know why? Here we go. No, go ahead. Just keep going. You were accomplishing something. Never mind. I won't touch that either. Yeah. So uh, anyway, what I was uh, out dig myself. Yeah. Uh, so I would too. <laughs> Hater, bro. Um, no, they played like. Brandon and I were watching. Like 
and they had a um, a touchdown call back. Yeah. Um, but they were playing really well. They looked good on the field. And All I was 11 points little, of it. I was actually, well, I was a little concerned, though, because the Bills did not get the first point. Yeah. And the Bills actually didn't get most of those points until after halftime. Half time, yeah, because it was tied at three in the third quarter, if I'm not mistaken. It was yeah. just it was just an atrocious game. Last time that the Bills beat him by five touchdowns. I mean, like, five. Brandon and I were sitting there like, this should be a much bigger gap. Yeah. Yeah. They held them back for a while, but once the Bills – Miami's always had a great defense. Stride. Once the Bills hit their stride, though, man, they were gone. The one strong point about Miami is, is their defense. It remains their best part. <laughs> point about Miami outside of Mr. G. Um, yeah, on. Miami is one and seven. I thought that they would, you know, hit those guys and the Pacers would be neck and neck right now. The Jets are currently in third place in the AFC East. Clap one time if you did not expect that. Actually, I think that's where I put them at. So. It could have been because you just have a weird hate for Tua. But Josh, yeah. he, you know, obviously he took, you know, I'm saying for a couple of touchdowns and they had one on the ground, so he's doing his big thing. But here's a guy that I want to talk about: ten catches, 110 yards, and no touchdowns with one Cole Beasley. Um, yeah, Measley Beasley, though, as Shannon Sharp like to call him. I have just, him. Uh, You know what I'm saying? Though, Shannon Sharp is a big fan of Measley Beasley. He, he likes to pick on Skip about it because, you know what I'm saying, Dallas let him walk for peanuts and it's burned him a couple of times with no slot receiver until recently. But uh, the worst spot for Miami next year is not having to Deshaun Watson because that's the one team who he's waived his no-trade clause to. Those guys need Watson, and they need a running back because Salt Ahmed and Miles Gaskins ain't it, bro. I said this last year. That is well, not it. I thought running backs came a dime a dozen, Brandon. Not yeah, the but these great two are ones. pennies. Not yeah. the great ones. These two are pennies. Yeah, so worst thing for Miami is that Tua remains their quarterback. I agree. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I said. But, I mean, he's he's really not played bad the past couple weeks. Last week, you know what I'm saying, he threw for multiple touchdowns, 300 yards. I mean. Yeah, good for him. He's finally got one. Yeah, well, I mean, getting one is better than not get one. The worst, worst case, um, excuse me for Buffalo. Mine is Josh Allen being hurt because that's the whole team. After Diggs. Actually, before Diggs. You know, Diggs is in second place. Uh, mm, for Buffalo? Yep. I don't know. I think they're a well-running team. I think the worst thing for them would probably be to have their fans – broadcasted live for an extended period of time. Oh, that ain't worst case, boy. That would give you some great content. I love Bill's Mafia. No, Chris, you. you ever seen Bill's Mafia? Smashing people through no. tables. They would set tables on fire, jackknife people through one, power like bomb people off vans. Boy. boy, it is like WWE in his heyday. Like oh, wow. O2. Like, you but know then saying? you see the Bill's owners, and they're like this old Really? Old old. Like, it's, it's wild, man. Like, I don't know what they got going on in Buffalo, but sometimes I want to be a part of it. I you know they probably – Pay these people to come out to their mansion and like, all right, light the tables on fire, boys, and <laughs> yeah. smash each They're other. Like backyard <laughs> restaurant, so we pay for it. Like this is wild. Like y'all got good insurance at home. Like what the world? Yeah, yeah. Buffalo be wild, man. I, I like Buffalo. Party, They're kind of cool. I ain't really got no beef with them outside of last year's playoff loss. I ain't Go got ahead. beef with them. I mean, we won the last you ain't time got we won with them. Look, last That's time, last time we won a Super Bowl was against them in nineteen ninety two. I was a twinkle in my dad's eye in nineteen ninety two. I remember watching that saying? game. I mean, I remember hearing it. I was four. Oh. I can't do nothing with that. So, we all picked the Bills to win. Looks like we all got it right. Woo-woo. I had the score looking at this very moment. Oh, right yeah, I now, promise me y'all. and Chris are tied, and you're two games behind. Oh, yeah, I promise y'all the costume in segment three. It's coming next segment. I forgot how many segments we have. Next game, slow. pass and chargers. Pass and chargers. 27-24. Oh, good game. And Patriots won. Yeah. Not what we expected. No. The Patriots have moved on to five. They can't win at home. They're three and zero away, and one and four at home. That is not Bill Belichick. Thank you. Now, granted, Bill he has won everywhere except Jupiter. You know, in the past twenty years, he even won on the moon once. I heard. <laughs> but three and zero away and one and four at home, it don't seem quite right though for Foxborough, man. But I mean, Mac Jones, hey, he played an average you know what game, it does? eighteen for thirty five and two eighteen, no touchdowns, no picks. But he didn't turn the ball over, and that's how they won the football game. You know, right you know who uh, what that bids well for them. If they make the playoffs, is they go they're on the road? Be on the road a lot, and this this could be good. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised by this win. Everybody, is. don't feel bad. <laughs> like everybody was surprised. It, this that just goes he, to show you, Mac is Mac is. Uh, we said at the beginning of this season, Mac Jones was a solid QB, and he was going to do fine in New England. And had the Chargers hit a wall? I mean, that's back to back losses though for the Chargers. Mm. Last game they got curb stomped though by the Baltimore Ravens. This game. 
you honestly have an inexperienced Patriots team at home and you lose to them. That that don't sound very good for Brandon he, Staley moving forward. Man. Here's my thing, though. Why did they lose? Um, I mean, they're I mean, a little soft against the run. Herb, yeah, Herbert threw a and, terrible now, pick six. Um, <laughs> yeah, that yeah, happens. I mean, in atrocious. I that, mean, that yeah, happens. that's true. But what yeah, I, they give up 141 on the, the ground. The thing that they've got to realize that they need to improve on is they they are not that great against run. And Baltimore here, here you are. Them. Baltimore beats the crap out of yeah. because what do they do? Run, run the, the ball, ball. effectively. Yep, the best. And then the here comes Andy, uh, the uh, pay, uh, the Pats. I wish we won today. Yeah, uh, the Pats, and they run the ball well. And Actually, it's three and a half yards of carry, but you keep pounding them over the head. Yeah, you know, I mean they don't, they didn't get away from the game plan. I think Bill knew I'm going. If I do it long enough, they will break. Yeah, and they did because they got a decent pass rush with Bosa. Um, they got good cover corners. Their their weak point is against the run. And having one sack on Matt Jones, it's not that's good. not a good look, man. Because Matt Jones, he I don't think Matt Jones is special. How many times did Matt you know throw Matt today? Jones remind me of? How many times did he throw today? I'm the mid thirties. That's still a lot, honestly. Yeah, he was eighteen. Yeah, there you go, right there. Eighteen for thirty five. Yeah, yeah. that's actually that. still a lot of a lot of pass. Yeah, but I don't. You know, who he reminds me of is Andy Dalton. He's nah. Ju- He's just nah. as he's just as good as what you put around him. I don't think Matt Jones can elevate nobody. I nah. think he's just as good as who you I give disagree, him. man. All right. I disagree. I, I who do I, you think is a good comp for him then? Because mm. I don't feel like Matt Jones is a like I don't feel like he's a special. Well, let me tell you, talent. you know who I think he, you know who I think is a perfect comp for him? And this is no joke. I ain't even trying to be facetious. Tom Brady. He plays like Tom Brady. He's smart. He puts in the extra work. Okay. He don't make a lot of mistakes. And early in his career, he wasn't asked to do a tremendous amount of stuff. Okay, so I finally got that admission out of somebody. Thank God. I mean, you know, honestly, he's due for nine touchdowns and a couple of picks. You know, he reminds six. me of Tom. Yeah, and I think not really the too, perfect why, shape, yeah. like not what you that's would why imagine. They, that's why they drafted him, in my opinion, because he did kind of fit the mold of coming out. And that's even, you know, how God was saying coming out, he kind of looked like Tom. He played like Tom. He didn't have a cannon, except he would throw it deep from time to time. He's kind of a check down Charlie right now. But that's not a sin as a young quarterback. No, I kind of get tired smart. of Aaron yeah. saying he's checked down Charlie. Well, he's not, you know, hey, turnover time. Yeah, either. call it whatever you want. Like, yeah. five yards on a pass play is not a cardinal sin. Not yet. Hey, first hey, give off, it time, it'd be a lead in two three years. three downs to get ten. And if I get five at a time. All you need is one more five-yard I'm pass. Playing, you at first. that point, I'm playing great defense and I'm playing great offense. Why yeah. would I change it? And it drives me nuts, you know. Uh, the obviously Dak Prescott has some of that same kind of cognitation coming into the league his first year where he's checking down. And Alex Smith dealt with it for Like, Alex Smith is probably the prototype for check down Charlie yeah. who would habitually throw it deep, but it works. gas you, and nobody would bring that up. Like, you know, he's – well, okay, I'm sorry. He threw for three passes, though, for 105 to Tyreek here today, and two of them he bombed it. Is he still checking down? Where it's Alex Smith. That, no, no, no. Is he checking down or is he making the right play in football? It's like basketball. The driving, you know, head charge, you know what I'm saying, hitting the layup ain't always the right place. Swing the ball, find the corner three, and bomb it. I agree. You don't need a guy who's going to, you know, Pat Mahomes every play. I love a smart quarterback. Yeah, Pat Mahomes checks down a lot. Yeah, he does. And he just got skilled players who make it do what they do on the edge. There ain't nobody like Miko Harbin and Tyreek Hill in New England. Right now, there ain't nobody. There's really not a receiver I know in New England right now. Nelson Aguilar is probably the best one. Yeah. Him, Hunter Henry, and John New Smith. And they're okay players, though, but they're not. I mean, most of those guys will be underneath anyway. Yeah, like, I'm not game planning for those guys. Just two tight ends. I have no deep threat. No, not a single one. They ain't got nobody who can even try to take the top I'll just throw it to Casper. Yeah. Go, Casper, go. Excuse me. He's seeing go Sam Darnold style. Yeah. Yeah. Nah. So, did we pick unanimous on this one? Oh, we did. All incorrectly. Charges. Charges. I'll tell you, but this has been our worst week by a country mile. Oh, by, it's on average for me. By the way, you just mentioned Sam Darnold real quick. <laughs> Jesus, Jason. I mean, he's not wrong. Uh, uh, you mentioned Sam Darnold uh, just a, a minute ago. He, so what? I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> so last week he got benched. Oh, God. Did this get, week. Did he get a concussion? Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Yeah, he got smashed. I made the comment to Chris in the truck. Uh, um, me and Chris had to get some food here in a second. And I made a comment to Chris last week 
Matt Rule made the decision this week. God made it. He had seen enough of Sam Darnold. I want to help you out, boy. Like, look, player, you got to get on up out of here. But he got obliterated he on that did. run. Like, his helmet come off and everything. Like, I always imagine God to sound like uh, Frog Horn Leghorn. I imagine him sound like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I'll, I'll say, son. I'll, I'll say, son. I'm going I'm to let you get the crap knocked out of your right here and uh, escort you right on over to the sideline. Don't do mind like, them stalls. Hey, what like if God Freeman's sounds like how we picture him? Huh? Like, if he sounds different what than if each God, person? Exactly. You, well, think I really you think I picture him to look like a rooster? Maybe I'm not <laughs> well, a rooster. Regardless, I'm with you. I hope he he yeah. It sounds like Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Either him yeah. or James Earl Jones. Ooh, that's a tough. I am your father. Yeah, um, I could tell you. If God does not hit that line, when I can tell me, man, boy, I am your father. Yeah, play. I know what's happening, Dad. I missed you. Like good. No, right. no. <laughs> like, oh, God. Uh, moving Anyways, on. Anyways, Jaguars and the Seahawks. It was seven to thirty-one. Jacksonville sucks. Uh, yeah, we got a break in two minutes. Hey, uh, hey, did we do the scariest proposition for the last two teams? We didn't. Go ahead. Let's hit it. Uh, who was the last two teams? The Bills. Chargers. Oh, we did for the Bills yeah. and Dolphins. Chargers in the past, though. Uh, we'll do that real quick, though, and we'll do this scariest, game. The uh, scariest proposition for the, the Patriots. Bill Belichick retires. <sighs> yep. That's that's yeah that's pretty solid. A bit that or, or his son stays on. No, no, no. Boy. I like his son. I like his son. I like the crazy faces. Damn. But, uh, hey, that's all right, me. Hey, man. Head mill. No, <laughs> hey, look, I love the mullet. Now, it's either Bill leaving. Mullet. <laughs> well, me, me and you caught eye contact. We knew. Leave we me knew. alone, man. I'm from the country. Hey, we knew. Oh, I like the mullet. Look, either Bill retiring or or an Asian massage parlor pops up next to the stadium. Both of those can be really bad. It is bad for Robert Kraft. It's one ninety nine Tuesday bad for the Patriots. I I'm agree. just saying. Hey, Bill retiring. The worst case negative for the Chargers to me is Justin Herbert going down. Boy, that is a fine young man at quarterback. Ooh. Even after his loss today, I feel like yeah, he's great. Going forward, he's going to be a top upper echelon QB in the league, man. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's an easy one to say though. Him yeah. going down. You know what I think would hurt them though? Austin Eckler, to go Eckler, down. and or Allen. Yeah, Keenan Allen. Is that a would monster. hurt. That would hurt. He's he, yeah. He's habitually yeah. a monster. NFL season after NFL. Now I tell you the worst thing that happened to them though, kind of like Atlanta. Moving if, LA. the, if those uniforms change, boy, Chris, because them things are beautiful. Them dark blue uniforms are some serious. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. I like. See, I like the powder blues uniform. myself. Me too. I like. I like them the powder blue ones, boy. Them boys look nice. Uh, but coming back after the break is Jaguars and the Hawks, man. And really, I hate that yeah. I got to talk about the Jaguars. Yeah. It's thirty-one to seven. We'll go over Meyer. Get that re- oh, lap dance. This- Hey guys, we're back here to Thrilling It on Next Door Radio and NextDoorRadio.com. Uh oh. Uh, I changed costumes if you're on the video feed, and I'm going to see if anybody can guess what or who I am right now. Chris, you know. Who would you guess yeah, I was if you had no idea? If I had no idea? Yeah. <clears throat> I would say you were recently in a maybe a vehicle accident or something, maybe a train wreck. Okay, close. All right, Jason, you know who I am. If you had no idea, who would you guess I was? Uh, Ben Roethlisberger's last girl friend. <laughs> Ouch! Ow! Good God, that's worse. Holy crap! <laughs> ding, ding, Jason, for that. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, obviously, by the Colts hat. I'm- Colts hat and my broke arm, my two broke wrist, and my broke nose, and my eyeshadow. I'm Carson Wentz. Um, <laughs> but you ain't got a red beard like me. Actually, Good you would have made a fantastic Carson Wentz. Yo, Prince Harry looking at Yeah. Sorry. Mark it. <laughs> no, yeah. for real, though. So, yeah. So, this is my second costume. Obviously, first, I was a positive pregnancy test. And this one, I'm Carson Wentz. Two, so. two very bad things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I know which one I'd rather see on a Sunday afternoon. I'll tell you that right now. I know, I know which one I'd rather have to deal yeah, with. Nine Carson Wentz can get better in 12 months. Yeah. The other one don't go away for like 26 years at least. Oh, good God. Yeah. 
That's a plus. Hopefully Carson – hey, hopefully somebody can tag Carson Wentz on Twitter and see how I'm making fun of him. I actually like Carson Wentz as a QB. I'm happy he's home. He looked good in that number two blue. He do. Yeah. I just wish our offensive line and uh, the defense would look a little bit better running it. But moving on. They look better than the Jags. Well, here's so the problem. I'm like, I got <laughs> beat up. Oh, 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 hold on. Hold on. What's – no, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll hold it. Go ahead. Okay. I'll wait. Jaguars and Hawks, Crystal. Oh, yeah, Jaguars. Seven to 31 Seahawks on top. Mm. All right, moving on. No, I'm just playing. Here's what happened. Urban Meyer didn't go get his his uh, motivational uh, workout. You know, dance yeah, we just called it routine. a workout. Yeah. Uh, interpretive thing. dance. I think I think he needs that. He needs just, an interpretive dance session before each game. You remember after the last so interpretive who, dance session he had, they won. Yeah, but who interprets it? Him or his wife? Because I feel like those two interpret it in very different ways. Well, you know, that's the thing about interpretive dance. That's fair. That's a very And fair as point. you said earlier, in the NFL, it's all about that win. Yeah. And sometimes, you, you know what I'm saying, you got to do what it takes. Herb. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Why don't you try this off this week? And if we get a victory, then we know we got the secret sauce. And at that point, like, can't you make it a talking point with the owner? Like, look, man, stop penalizing me for this. Stop right. dragging me through the mud because when I do it, it wins. We, yeah, we win. Mr. Khan, we win. Shaq Khan. You, you, you I t- called him Shaka Khan one Shaka show, and Chris like the fell out. <laughs> yeah. I was like, who is Shaka Khan? And then when he started pitching, I'm like, oh, yeah, Dude. that's not the Jaguars owner. <laughs> he dog. has My the bad. best mustache. I'm just <sighs> I wish I could have a mustache. But Jacksonville only scored seven day to Trevor Lawrence through one touchdown in garbage time. He looked rough yeah. today. Join the crowd. Yeah. How many times did he get sacked? You Once for 11 yards, he just ran for his life the whole damn oh, okay, game. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Geno well, Smith. I had this one wrong. 20 for 24, multiple touchdowns at 195. He even rushed for a touchdown. So Before all you guys go out there and get excited, he Trey played against the Jaguars. T- yeah, Trey all-purpose touchdowns. So, three of them. And, uh, you know, once again, he did play against the Jacksonville Suck Wars. Worst um, case scenario for the Jags. Um Myers their coach next year. Yeah. That would be Plain bad. But I think he had to do after year one. Worst case scenario for the Seahawks. If Russell Wilson doesn't come back completely healthy this year or next year or doesn't come back at all. It's Russell Wilson. Plain and simple. How about you? You know, you always go for the easy stuff like the quarterbacks. You know? Here's what I think. I think if they lost half of their fan base in an earthquake, it would be really bad for them because that fan base helps them win games. That is the one of the worst places to play. And they're one and three at home. That's the crazy part. Yeah. Them and the it Pacers seems like have pretty tough home fields. Yeah. And just atrocious this year. Yeah. Kansas yeah, City. And seven at home combined. Kansas City and Seahawks in the Seattle is two of the toughest places to play because of the fan base. You trying to get me closer to you, baby? I am. Yeah, I got my arm propped up over <laughs> oh, here on something. Right. Here. here. All right. Um, hey, you these lips are for Dylan. Everything else you can have. Oh. All right. Moving on. Washington. Yeah, that was an inside joke in our group. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, well, who picked what? Come on now. I well, think we all you, you and uh, no, you and uh, Brandon got it right, and so you went dumb again. <laughs> I mean, no, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, I went. Was hey, last week as they said week? about um, as they said about uh, what was his name, Sean Penn in the movie I Am Sam. He went full, and I went full. Oh yeah, you can't. Yeah, yeah. was it was not his statement last week? He's like, I got to come back this week. I got to this time. <laughs> yeah. I got to think with my head. I better not my say heart. his actual comment was exactly what you just said. I use my head, not my heart. <laughs> Boy, his heart is like. Hmm. I thought if they were going to win one, it would be against Geno Smith. Who would? I? Hey, in his defense, I kind of feel him on that boy because I had Geno Smith like, on my fantasy team last week, boy, and that big boy was atrocious. This week, he come back and dropped three of them on him. I was thinking for sure the Jags would get him a second win here, and they did. And <laughs> they, they did. did. They I, lost hey, by a ton. Hear me out. I will not be picking them again. If you can't beat Geno Smith, yeah, it's a done deal. That's unless a you're playing them. the Texans. Hey, hey, and they still got to see Houston. And don't forget, Houston stomped them in the first week of the year. <laughs> yeah, he did. And, like, that's it. That's probably the word. Like, he can that coach for two more the years. the tone for exactly. the whole season. Exactly. Right? He could coach for two more years, and that's still going to be his worst loss ever. His yeah. first week of the year, he lost to the Houston Texans, led by David Cully and Tyrod Taylor, who's coming back next week, I believe. Happy to see Tyrod back. I feel like the Chargers uh, right here going uh, back-to-back losses. Uh, oh, but, fair enough. Yeah. Washington and the Broncos. All right, so who, so uh, Chris couldn't remember who he picked. Honest to God, so who? Yeah, did he I don't remember. This? Oh yeah, 
You picked the Broncos, you okay. you non fan. All right, so I'm not going uh, to reveal the conversation me and Chris had during this game. <laughs> oh, uh, go ahead. What would he say? He don't, he don't want to pull for him anymore. That's not what I said. It's not what he said. What did he say? Not what I he said. said he loved Washington and he was heart you know, broken by their play this season so far. I don't understand. <clears throat> okay, so we've talked about the Chargers. Anybody know who the kicker is for the Chargers? Yeah, Hopkins. I give you one guess. Well, <sighs> yeah. So he made. I love this today. This is hilarious. Every me, one of the kicks he went up for that I recall. Uh huh. Yep. Um, yeah, because that's what he normally does. That's why he was like the eighth best kicker in the league. Blew it. Blew out. Uh huh. Um, so much so that when we got to a fourth down, there wasn't a question of are we going to kick a field goal. Yeah. It was. Well, we're going to have to push this one on. Yeah. yeah. So here's what needs to happen, why? Chris. This is why what needs to happen. Why did we do this to ourselves? Well, I'll tell you why we do it. I'll <laughs> tell you why we do this. it. We have had consecutively horrible GMs who, by extension, make horrible choices, make horrible decisions by bringing in horrible players and letting go of some really good players and sprinkling in some horrible coaches hired by the same people. If I was Dan Snyder and I wanted to set things right for once, I thought the Ron Riviera hire was pretty all right. I thought Del Rio was pretty all right. But every other every other thing, like I would let them all go. The president of my operations, my GM, every other coach on the staff. Scott Turner would be the first one. Between the GM, the front office, then Scott Turner, that'd be the order I start firing people now. And with all the money that they got, I'd be calling on Indianapolis. I'd be calling on all these other places that got great GMs making, you know, intelligent decisions. And I'd say, I will pay you what they're paying you two times over. Just come run my organization. I'm sick and tired of it. As a fan my entire life, I'm so tired of these people making stupid decisions, of which you have now witnessed Case in point, once a year decision for Washington, letting go of Hopkins. Eighth best yeah. kicker in the league. He goes to Seattle. What does he do? Make all kinds of field goals. What does Blewett do? Miss all kinds of field goals. What do we do? You. Lose the game. You get oh, a full dude. experience, Chris, and you're He missed baby. two field goals, which would have made blocked. this a one point game. And they were both blocked. That's worse. Would have been a one point game. And really, what's bad, it wouldn't have been a one point game. Y'all would have had a chance to win it because you wouldn't have had to go, you know what I'm saying? Right. You could have kicked the field goal. You were inside the 24. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you yeah. could have tried to go for the field goal, though, inside into, you know, a uh, red zone uh, possessions. But I mean, y'all's defense right now is just atrocious. They actually oh, yeah, played they decent today. On. They no. played okay. Yeah. Um, they got commented on. I mean, by oh, so, oh, oh, God, boy, the commentator off that game was, just <laughs> he, he was taking rough. y'all to the woodshed. But he was like, Washington, where's defense in the football? And now we're back to the worst defense in football. He said what looked like yeah. three, four times. And then at one point, he, when they were switching between games, because full disclosure, we use red zone. Uh, when they were switching between games, he's like, all right, nothing else to see here. Let's go watch a football game like, with the defense. I was like, like oh, my. my. Like, me and Chris just started chuckling. But like, what are they talking about? There was 27 points scored throughout the entire game. That was a great defensive game. They were game. talking about the number, and I'm trying to remember what statistic they used. Was it the number of yards um, against us this season, or what was it that they? There was look, some statistic we suck they when used. The, you it was like 200 and something look, was a number. When you throw against us, odds are you're going to complete the pass. When you run, yeah, hey, when you run against us, 26 for 213 in the touchdown. Yeah, average Bridge water day. Yeah, when but, you, yeah. Heineke did not look great today either. He threw for 270, a touchdown, and two picks. He did yeah, not look like Not a great himself. quarterback. No. No, he did not look. And this is – it all comes back to who is in his head. Scott Turner. Honestly, y'all's biggest problem is Terry McLaurin. He didn't catch but three out of seven targets. There were – I was going to say there yards. were a couple of times some bounced off some shoulders, oh, some yeah. bounced off some hands. No, hold on. That that Yeah, that's got to be fixed. But if Terry McLaurin's getting that many targets, don't blame the quarterback. Quarterback's going to throw to who's he's open. He's getting seven targets, yeah. Yeah, because Heineke, he's, he's pretty smart cat. He's, yeah, he's, he's okay. a good quarterback. Uh, that's on the scheme. And who does that come from? Scott Turner. You've been on the Scott Turner train for like six weeks. He's now, so got feel, to go, you feel bro. feel pretty strong. 
Like, like pretty strong, G- Scott Turner what did he do in Carolina? Yeah. The same crap, yeah. bro. His, I liked his dad as the coach for the Chargers. Like every year they were twelve and four, but that's different than when you got Antonio that's Gates, dad. LT, and Phil Real. Hey, that's a I mean, some that's of a us live up to our father's shadows. Some, some of, of us don't. It. What's up, Dad? Yeah, no, some exceed it. Some don't. And that's okay. Maybe, maybe Scott offense coordinate name for you. Yeah, you can call me. I'll come do it for y'all. I'd look. Mm. <laughs> I would. Hey, I'll do I the would. defense. Well, just one game, bro. Just and honestly, too, like you know, hey, going in this game, do Antonio Gibson? You know, obviously he's y'all's. He's quote unquote y'all's bear cow back. I think it's probably a one A. You know, hey, one B with him, McKissick, yeah. the Jared Patterson. He led John on rushes, eleven rushes, of forty six yards. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, that kid's gonna be. One. He's gonna be good. He's pretty good. He's the one um, who was pounding for him doing the preseason uh, to come there. The but chase, Sean, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So obviously, he come in. You know, he had a a decent day. But going forward, though, for y'all, man, what do you think y'all scariest proposition is for Washington? Because I got a good one. Nothing changes. <clears throat> you sorry sucker! I was gonna say it stays the same. And that that's really like that. That's worst case. Y'all almost need a from the top down implosion. Just Best case scenario, we release some emails. <clears throat> Out, maybe solve some. They've problems. already tried that. I'm, and it, tell, I'm ain't telling nothing you, there. I give it six months or less. It's coming. Well, they've hope, already tried that. But let me tell you something. I hope Blewett sends an email. Look into in the day and age <laughs> that we're in. <laughs> yeah. If they already released John Gruden's emails when they're doing an investigation yeah, of Washington, I mean, they if they Washington. had a sliver. Of a bad email from Daniel That's Snyder, yeah. he'd have been gone. The da- I don't think Daniel Snyder's a problem. He was early on because, like all rich new owners, he wanted to be involved in every decision. Jay Jones. And look, and that happens. That Every owner, every owner goes through that phase. Yeah, Jerry right? Jones has just lived in it for 30 years. Yeah, Jerry Jones never came out of it. Daniel Snyder has progressively each year been less involved. And, hey, and that's the way he should be. I wish he would come in. Straight down. I right, look. I tell you what. You want to be. You want to make headlines, Daniel. You want to. You want to do some great things and, and, and be progressive. Here you go. Hire a woman GM. Everybody get behind that. Make sure she's smart, good looking, and makes great decisions. And I'll support you. I'll support you. You know what? Come out. Hire your woman GM. Hey, hire a woman head coach for all I care. Hire a woman offense coordinator. Hey, you want to be the team that, that makes all the right hires as progressive and politically correct? Do that. Do something cool. I don't care. But just make sure that whoever it is isn't going to be your worst nightmare. Because y'all, every time y'all we've y'all been doing that. this crap in the past where we try to do the politically correct thing, we just hire people and don't know what they're doing. I think really like. I think y'all's head coach is very solid. Like I love Ron. I like Ron too. I think, but Jack let's Del be Rio honest, bro. Decent. You brought in J- Scott Turner. Only thing you've done, Ron, and this is the one thing I don't like about you, is you've basically transformed us into the Panthers, the Panthers of which you only had statement. one one great season. And I don't want. Like, I don't want to have one. And that, I mean, I mean, y'all would settle for one right now. But that season with the Panthers, mm-hmm. it was like nah. Ball. Give me a cool, fresh, uh, interesting woman GM. Hey, uh, I'm telling you, hey, this hire Eric these, Bellamy as our head coach. Y'all had Sean McVay in the building, bro. That's the that's the crap. That's I'm the talking part about. that would make me Dude, absolutely give, sick. Hey, Sean McVay give, was at the crib and listen, y'all let him walk. Bro, and give me, man. give me some cool headlines. Hire Eric Bellamy as the offensive coordinator or as hey, head BM. coach. I don't care. It' being me. Sorry. Yeah, you hire fine. him. Hire him. Hire him right now. Hire a woman GM. Right. Uh, give go get me. Go hey, go pay Dan. No, I like Jack. I like Jack Del Rio. I'll leave him alone. That's a Jack Street. Give me Eric as a head coach. Sorry, Ron. No offense. Give me Eric as a head coach, and go get me the guy from Dallas. Go get me the guy from Dallas who's coordinating for them. Kellen Make, Moore. Yeah, Kellen Moore. And let's bring him. We'll pay him two times what you paying, Jerry. So he, he's interesting proposition of me and Kellen Moore. One of the guys where was a Cowboys fan. Me and him was talking about this. I didn't mean to cut y'all up, but Kellen Moore is interesting to me. He had a chance, and he had a chance. You know, I, you know. Obviously, he was quarterback at Boise State. Yeah. And they asked him to come back, and he was like, "I love my alma mater." He would be the hero with, in the state of Idaho because ain't nothing else out there except Kellen Moore, nothing. And you know, he said, "No, I'm gonna stay in Dallas." I can see him making that jump. Now, I can see for you guys having him and Eric. Boom! That'd be great. And Jack Del Rio there. Nobody's Do doing it, bro. I feel like whatever decision y'all make, I'm not being funny. Obviously, I love to give you guys a hard time. I just feel like whatever. Choice Washington makes is going to be the wrong one. Plain nah. and simple. I just do. Nah, if they just go get, look, look, you got all the money in the world. All the money. 
Top two richest teams in the NFL. Go get Eric. Go get Kellen Moore. Find us just straight up, just merciless, legit woman GM. Be the first franchise in the NFL to have one. Let her come out, take names, and and, and, and just hey, run Blake. the league, bro. Run the league. And then, hey, all positive headlines. There's not a negative headline going to come from hiring Eric. There's not a negative headline going to come from hiring Keller. And there ain't a negative headline going to come from hiring just a, a flat-out, drop-dead, straight business woman GM. Boom. Positive, positive, positive. And then, let's build our, We've got big names on our team, bro. Yeah. Young, paper. big names. Teams on paper, that's not y'all's issue. Y'all should have a phenomenal team. Dude. And my biggest thing, Let's too, change the headlines. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Change the change headlines. Change the headlines. Mom for Denver. Going into next year, still not having a solid head coach and QB marriage. Because Vangio and Bridgewater, those two don't go together, you know what I'm saying, like peas and carrots, the way Forrest Gump said. Those two is like cold ice cream and macaroni and cheese. They're okay individually. I wouldn't eat them together. I'm just saying. Denver. Denver. Yeah, Denver. The worst thing that could happen for Denver is if John up. Elway picks one other person to be a quarterback. Oh, good God. You're correct about that, boy, because that man ain't found one says Peyton. He's done had Paxton Lynch, Drew Locke, Teddy B, Brett hey. Ripon, Tim Tebow. Good God. If, if, no, if there is something to be said, and you call it anecdotal all you want. Oh, right, I call it anecdotal. No. Here comes Chris. <laughs> Don't know much about football. Never yeah. watched it. Never paid attention to it. Didn't care about it. I'm forcing him now. Yeah, he's in it. He's in it now. He's basically kicking our tail oh, on oh, picking no, no, winning no, no, teams. No, no. Why? Because he's in the moment. John hey. Elway's problem is he's picking quarterbacks because based off what like he him. knew. Yep. From, like back in the '80s. Yeah, from the '80s. It's hey, like, hey, hey, Chris made a comment today, man, and I don't, you know, obviously, you know, what I'm saying you didn't hear it, but I wish you did hear. It. He said, you know. This has become, you know, hey, part of the best part of my week right here. I was like, that's how I felt it. You know, it's new for See? Years, baby. I did. I See? Love it. I love it. Every Isn't Sunday it is great, like coming man? home. Southern Baptist people have church. I got football starting at 1 o'clock. <laughs> you know, what? hey, this game is probably the biggest game of the week in Tampa. You know what I'm saying? The Saints. I, I do want to wait until happened, after the break man. to cover this because that's going to be a multitude-layered <sighs> game here. If y'all can wait till after the break, I would really appreciate that. Chris, how much time have we got to till break? Um, we can go ahead and do one right about that now. sounds good. Like. Hey, before we go, Washington, hire Eric. Oh, wait, I'm a Hire right-handed killing. quarterback. Oh, no, I'm going to throw a pick with my left hand. Hire Thanks, Carson GM. Wentz. <laughs> oh, it was intercepted Christ. by the other team. Right. Touchdown. <laughs> Thank you, Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment, for sponsoring this hour of third eight here on Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. When we get back, hopefully we'll come back with some good news. That Eric, that uh, Washington football team has made changes in the coaching uh, room, has made changes in the GM room, and we'll be able to say that finally, finally, there's promise and hope for tomorrow. But if not, we're just going to talk about the Bucks and the Saints and make some picks for next week. Don't call me. Don't text me unless your house on fire. So the back door is open. Go. It looks like it's something. <laughs> Shoot it up, barbecue, and spit it back into the area. Well, it ought to be nice and soft for yeah. you ditchers. Hey, hey, this is old boy. You don't see me running marathons because I know my limits. Third and eight is back. Hey guys, and welcome back here to Third and Eight on Next Door Radio at nextdoorradio.com. Much like Carson Wentz, it took me a week. Or a segment, and I healed up, man. My <laughs> arm is perfectly fine. Um, I still have a few little dinks and dunks here and there. You know, Carson Wentz style, you know, he's never fully healthy. But I'm back for prime time. I'm ready to go. Hey, if you – okay, so if you can heal up like Carson, like Carson Wentz, you think you could grow your hair as quick as Drew Brees? <sighs> there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I could if I had Drew Brees' money, you feel me? Don't think I ain't been looking at them Bosley commercials at 1 a.m. Like, if I only had an extra job, I could pull this off. Market. <laughs>
<laughs> if I say market, I done said a bad word, and Chris got to go back and take it out. So if you run to hear me say a market, like I got, you know, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying the Tourette's or something. That's why it's Chris got to take. He do. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, well, I mean, more or less. Yeah, I guess you could write. But our final game on the slate over this week, man, is the Saints and Bucks. The Colts lost. I'm so disappointed. The Colts lost. But a Tom Brady loss is almost the same as an Indianapolis Colts win to me. And Tom losing on the road, Jameis winning on the road, i get back to him in a second. Actually, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. He's done. MCL, ACL, are those sufficient yeah. from, the, you know, I'm saying, from the Saints camp. And Adam Scheffner, Jameis Winston is done though for the year. Man, I hate to see that guy go down. He took a, a decent oh my hit. God. Well, it was more it was a horse collar. It was a horse yeah. collar tackle that had his knee bent. Yeah, it, it and went. Everybody was talking about how bad Jameis Winston was. It went one way, and the rest of him oh, went the other. It was. It wasn't Dak Prescott ugly as far as the ankle coming out of the you know skin and all. It was pretty bad. Though. I think Jameis gonna be out for quite some time. They're calling it a quote significant knee yeah. injury. Yeah, but it's been announced his MCL and ACL are just you know okay. done so. Yep, ACL anyway. injury. Yep, MCL ACL. Yeah, but about fourteen touchdowns and three picks. That's Jameis Winston's stat line. Much like I predicted, he'd be a much better quarterback than somebody who knew what he was doing. And Sean Payton, they over the coaching staff and Dirk Cutter and Bruce Arians who he had in Tampa. And everybody, you know, you know, y'all can talk about Tom winning in Bruce Arians' system. Tom made him change that system because they were five hundred until they changed it. That's right. That system though was never great. Tom said, "No, I've had enough of your system." Do it my way, and I'm gonna take y'all. You know, what I'm saying the title town. Yeah, there's some exactly good things in the system. It just wasn't oh, well yeah, rounded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think Tom's gonna maybe coach a team when he's? I hope not, bro. Because I'm tired of that man. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> I, I hope the really... Colts pick him up. <laughs> but I thought the same thing about Peyton. Peyton ain't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, very true. Though, because I thought Peyton honestly would be a GM somewhere by now. Because Peyton was a coach on the field when he played. He was like. Basically, like our offensive coordinators were essentially useless in Indianapolis. So much like Byron Left, which is in Tampa mm-hmm. Bay with Tom, and much like Josh McDaniel was with Tom, and whoever the OC is in Green Bay, you about useless too. I mean, you know, obviously these guys are professionals and they're, you know, hey, top of the class and what they do. They'll be, you know, hey, you got prime time quarterbacks, man. It's pretty much, you know, their show and we all know it. But, you know, honestly, I can't pin this loss on Tom. I mean, I mean, he threw a terrible pick six at the end. <laughs> yeah, he did. And he looked mad. Mad. Oh, yeah. he don't like to mess up. Yeah, yeah. He, he don't. He's a perfectionist yeah. above all else. Yeah. That's why he's so good, man. He takes it serious. He, uh, yeah, I hate to say it. It's man. not just a paycheck for him. No, he t- and so this way they was talking to us fourth down or excuse me third and long, and they were trying to punt. This is the series after he threw the pick six, and so the game was essentially over. He told him no, stay on the field, go for it. And Chris was like, "What happens though if he waves off?" Um, had the coach staff, I'm like, "It's Tom Brady." You know what I'm saying? If he waves you off, you shut up. Well, uh, well, my question was specifically, what happens when he waves them off and he's wrong Wrong. like he was? I was like, "Yeah, yeah." You live and learn with that result. Actually, you don't learn from it. You live with that result. That's Tom Brady. You listen to him. And like I said, like them coaches, like coaches, know, man, because at least that coaching staff can put their ego aside. Yeah. Because some coaches can't do that. You know what I'm saying? If I got a quarterback that's that. That great about Little Man, he probably knows the what's best right now. That's why Aaron Rodgers and you know his head coach had a little bit of beef last year during the NFC title game as far as going for, you know what I'm saying, that three point field goal at the end of, you know, Aaron wanted to go for it. Tommy having that boy, he's on the field and you're gonna have to drag him off. But the Saints going to five and two at home and set man, I don't trust them going forward with Trevor Simeon as their starting quarterback. Mm. I just I, I just don't, man. The Taysom Hill is out there for quite some time, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Chris, hey, look that up real quick, though, if you got a second. No, see how long the Taysom Hill is out. See I how was, long he's out? Yeah. He's been hurt for quite some time. But, you know, having Trevor Seaman as a starting quarterback is not a recipe for wins. You might be good as the Jacksonville Jaguars at that point. You know what I'm saying? They're keeping it a buck with you there. Um, but, I mean, going forward, man, Tampa's going to be all right. The Saints, on the other hand, not great. It says he's expected to clear the concussion protocol by week nine Falcons game. Oh, so that's next week. They may not be too bad after all. You may get to see the full, you know what I'm saying, the full-blown Taysom Hill experience then. Which Taysom's pretty good. He's, I mean, he's all right. I'd rather have Taysom Hill over Trevor Simeon. I'll tell you that right now. And twice on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> Trevor Simeon is a fine backup quarterback. Obviously, he was the quarterback who was in Denver just after Peyton Manning left that season. He did okay. He was, like, just under 500. But, well... We come into this week, Brandon, you were leading the picks at okay. this point with 26. Uh, Chris, 
you were in a close second with 25. Uh-huh. And uh, I was cruising with losing at 20. <laughs> after this week, after this week, thus far, now there's one game left of which you and uh, – you and uh, Brandon both have Chris Dallas, and I have Minnesota. It's tied tied ball game right now. Brandon has seven correct picks, putting him at thirty three. You have nine correct picks, putting you one game ahead of him at thirty four, <laughs> and I have seven, putting me one little bit, a little, just a little bit closer at twenty at six games behind at twenty seven. Now, if you both are right, nothing changes for you. If you both are wrong, nothing changes for you. Off the game sure. outcome of the game tonight. It would help me incredibly much to have Minnesota win this game for a multitude of reasons. One, to improve Kirk Cousins' a primetime record. It's 2-13 and 13 if you um, Still, it's double. It's <laughs> twice as good as it was. Um, That's a fair point. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and I would be at 28 and, and within five games of you guys, which is much A couple much weeks out for you. Yeah. So... <laughs> With that said, <laughs> as we begin to make our picks for this week hey, coming Paul, up, know Paul, that real, you're picking from the front. Real quick, Brandon made a comment earlier before we came uh, up here to do the show. We were we were watching football and we were talking about <clears throat> why your 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 rankings are so or your score or whatever is so low in in this particular uh, thing. How many weeks have we been doing this? Four. Four weeks. How many games down are we? Like, am I from y'all? How many games down? Yeah, are you sorry? Uh, I'm. You said four, seven or five, from seven? you, six from him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> how many weeks have you picked Washington? <laughs> Every week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was that was a comment Brandon had brought up, and it didn't occur to me how true that rang until you just gave I us numbers. Funny. I, was like, I was like, oh. Jason picking Washington to his own detriment. Yeah. But something, too, we all talked about, you know what I'm saying, doing, doing the <laughs> How come our scores were so low? Well, Chris won't making picks for this early on. And so we started this title to yeah. know from the show. Chris started making picks. Yeah, it's only four weeks old. He's our yeah. prognosticator, per se. So um, w- I'm oh, going to well, have to look up a word Brandon used. Holy crap. I'll let your boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? He knew something I didn't. Hold on. And he got it out. It's a P, and he got it out. I'll let your boy. Rotten a person who foretells or prophesies a future event. A prognosticator. Didn't know I knew that, did you? Did you? Know? Hey. I didn't, and I didn't know I didn't know it. There so go. there we go. Had what that in the say? back pocket for about two years now. I finally <laughs> got to use it. It's probably the one word in the English language I keep announcing. Nobody else knows. Close, close relation to portents. So, and anyway, I hey, I, yeah, Washington has put me. <laughs> uh, and, and, and this affection for Jaguars thinking they're going to win them a game has, I'm and the Lions that. has really hurt hey, me. I ain't going to BS with you, boy. The Lions got me this week, too, and they got me bad because I went on our Facebook page like, boy, the Lions getting their first dub today. You can book it. And then they come out and get a 40 piece chopped on them and lose about 30. So this is where I I'm at. Them as no more. This is where I'm at. No more. Oh, I'm, at that, strong, I'm at that boy. precipice where I've got to make a decision right now. Yeah, you got to make a pimp decision and quick. I either have to. Go straight, logical picks, and hopefully I can come on you guys one game, one week at a time. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm up. looking at this. Washington doesn't play next week. Right. <sighs> Y'all going to so lose to bye week. I'm, well, they, <laughs> I'm saving. I'm, I'm, I'm save, you should get an extra point. Right. So, I can, either, I can either go that route, and hopefully there's that one game that you guys mess up on, and I, and I just close the gap one week at a time, and it comes down to the wire. Right? Or... I gotta say, hey, I've got to take fences. one week and swing for the fences. For the fences yeah. <laughs> We're gonna find out my decision here in a minute. Oh, hey, real quick though, um, yeah, because I forgot about this again. Uh, the worst case scenario though, for the Saints in Tampa Bay. Worst case scenario for the Saints. You Ooh. don't have a quarterback next year because James it's is looking hurt, rough. Taysom Hill is in his early thirties, and you don't really have a lot of draft picks going forward. Worst case for the Saints is, uh, who that is still your uh. It's still your slogan. Y'all become just yeah. saying. <laughs> well, well, who he is? Who yeah. is your quarterback? <laughs> yeah. Who that becomes who he is? Yeah, yeah. Who yeah. that quarterback? I, I, yeah. Who that Jason quarterback? Jason, you took it from the market. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that that's the worst case for them. For uh, Tampa, Tom Lee. No, yeah, that's, that's worst well, case, bro. But yeah, Tom's that guy. I hate to say it. Yeah. Okay, but a normal worst case scenario yeah. uh, would be. I just on- got a good one. Honestly, um, they force you to get rid of the ship at your stadium. Bro, ain't that the 
that's like the best attraction at the stadium to me. Just saying. I feel like those I'm cannons getting, go off. Thank you for grooming me a lot this week. Yeah, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, it must be the holidays. It doesn't happen a lot. It really don't. It's but like, honestly, going for them, like obviously, you know, hey, those guys that brought back their entire roster from last year. Some oh, yeah. of those guys on one year deals. Oh, Vikings you, have taken the lead, thirteen ten. Sorry, you good. <laughs> you may how you well, actually. There's no. You may have to. Those guys they can come back a third go round. It'd be tough. Is somebody gonna get them? And I ain't saying they're wrong for this. Obviously, it's a physical sport. You can get hurt on any play. Hey, go get your bag. Some guys just want to go. You know, I don't know though, man. Go get paid Do you think this. that? Hold on, no. Hold on. Let, think about that for a second. If you had to, if you say you go and win it this year. Or you yeah. go and you lose it, lose but it. but you either way you're in the big game, which okay. probably will happen. Yeah, I can see that. Would it, especially if you won it? Would you really leave for the dollar this year, or would you say, man, I hey, look in three year. years, I could have three trophies. Like you're you're a part of something special. You yeah, know, you already have no money. You know, if nothing else happens. You're going to be in the history yeah. books if you're yeah. three out of four. You're going to be the three. representative of some insurance company when you do get something, bro. Oh, yeah, you're going to be sure. making bank just, just being a communicator. You know, oh, yeah, like for sure. Public relations guy. So, anyway, I don't know. I, I'd probably stick around. As long as Tom's there, I'm going to stay there. I, you know, I hate to say it. I kind of agree with you. Yeah. I kind of Because some you. of those guys are old anyway. Brown. AB and Chris uh, Godwin. Uh, Gronk. Gronk. You know, I mean, those guys, yeah. I mean, it ain't going to benefit. They ain't going to get paid too much to go anywhere else. Yeah, Giovanni. And you can book this. Gronk ain't leaving Tom. No, yeah. no. They might have to double casket yeah. them bad jokers together. Yeah. They try, remember that when they tried to trade him to Detroit, and He's, that more retired said, was like, I ain't I'm having retired. it. I ain't having it. I can't blame him. I don't <laughs> that was a player either. move right there, boy. I'm you, boy. Gronk, yeah. Gronk got some stones on yeah. him. I'm not arguing with that man. Yes, sir. You can stay. That's why I think USAA should just go ahead and let him get insurance through him, even if he ain't a vet. Yeah, you know what I mean. Let that man have insurance, man. No kidding. Just saying. I don't even know if they're doing themselves any favors by putting Gronk on TV as their spokesperson telling him he can't be insured by him. Well, that's just rude, USA. That's a fair point. As a veteran, I think that's rude. <laughs> he said he could have my insurance. Yeah, he can have mine. Shoot. All right. So, I'm five games behind Brandon, <laughs> or six games behind Brandon, seven games behind Chris. Will I go with the logical walk him down one week at a time because there's just enough time left to do that? That's 12 or, weeks left. Or am I swinging for the fences? Nine weeks left. Ten weeks left. It's enough. I'm bad at math. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris. First game's up. What is it? Giants, Chiefs. Well, you're in the lead, so you got to pick. I'm picking Chiefs. Uh, yeah, the Chiefs are the home team. Giants are plus 10 right now. Um, if I'm honestly betting this game, I think it's going to be the Chiefs. And I think it's going to be the Chiefs plus 20. I think the Giants are just atrocious as a franchise and right now. Though Pat Mahomes, one Pat Mahomes. Actually, Chris, hit my old man Monday real quick. I got Uh-oh. some. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, Lord. I just stumbled into something here by accident, man. Here it comes. these people. Hit it. No cascade, kids. Get off my line. Here comes old man Monday with Brandon. I told Chris prior to break, I didn't have one of them. Here I come and stumbled up on it. You know what I'm saying? Like a mass murderer, you know what I'm saying, in the woods. I'm tired of Pat Mahomes' entire bloodline. His wife, his mama, his brother, his dog, his cat, his third grade teacher. All oh, y'all just shut the hell up. I'm tired of every time I get on TikTok, his brother's doing all this fancy mess. And every time you get on TikTok, his wife's twerking in the restaurant. And Pat Mahomes, the little like he want to be Joe Goldberg's next victim in the show, you. Somebody, you can go up behind Pat Mahomes and knock that man out of the bar, drag him out, and he'll probably wake up happy. He ain't got to be around his family anymore. Somebody kidnap Pat Mahomes to take him away. Aaron Rodgers don't even talk to his family behind this kind of nonsense no more. Pat Mahomes, you got $500 million contract, killing him away. Hey, his baby mama crazy. Homegirl got that twinkle in her eye. I seen that twinkle. I know what it looked like. She got it, and she got you for life, homie. I yeah, feel I know. Because he knows if she if he leaves, that it's that's half his rap, stuff. Boy. Yeah, well, there's two hundred fifty million dollars gone. Well, I feel so. I, I, it's hard, you know, honestly, to feel bad for somebody who's six foot five, a professional athlete who just got paid five hundred million. Somebody dollars. needs to tell him how to make a new paved paved uh, driveway. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Talk, wait a minute. I was gonna say concrete basketball court, but we on the same page. Yeah, yeah. All right. it took me a second. My bad. You know, obviously I'm not the fastest one in the room, but yeah, yeah. man. Like I'm just so tired of that man's family, man. Every time me and Chris talk about his brother last week, he said, "You ever seen Pat Mahomes' brother?" I'm like, "Oh, you mean mm-hmm. this guy?" I'm so tired of him, man. You are not your brother. Shut up, sit down. How dare yeah. you dance on the yeah. logo of Sean that Taylor, was- who like. At his, you know, some memorial service in Red, uh, hey, Redskins Stadium. Uh, hey, yeah, he uh, gonna pay for his name. FedEx. Yes, yeah, FedEx Field. 
Yeah. Of course, it's ran by the government. It's terrible. But on top of that, you're going to dance on that man's number. And then every time you see Pat Mahomes in one of these TikToks, he just like he's ready to smoke off a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you be? I am so tired of this man's family. I'm sick of y'all. Like, I'm the like, one he, thing that got my last family that's worth something. You could do better than your wife. We're going to start there. And on mm-hmm. top of that. That's true. Your bro- I'm telling you, that boy is older than 18. You can lay hands on homeboy now, Patrick. Yeah. You can put hands on homeboy. Smack I see Chris him. laughing. That boy is above 18. You think you're going to embarrass me and I'm making the mask for this family? His mom ain't no better. I, I ain't going to drag nobody's mama. I blame Pat, though, for giving him tickets to the game. I ain't going to drag nobody's mama because I ain't even got one. But I kindly pull mama aside and be like, mama. Stop. You need to do something with Jackson because he's embarrassing the crap out of his family. You need yeah. to stay off Twitter and every. His mama had the audacity, the audacity to go on Twitter and say if an interception bounces off a receiver's hands, it should be counted as a pick towards her uh, son. Well, who's it going to be counted to then? I've always kind of agreed with that anyway. But, woman, shut up. Yeah. Y'all talking about the Chiefs dynasty. They've won one Super Bowl in three years. They should have been the one Frank Clark riding them on an offsides called against the Patriots. You got your boot smoked last year because Pat Mahomes had to run 500 yards in the opposite direction. Direction. If I was you, Pat Mahomes, I went 500 yards backwards away from my family. That is my old man money. I'm tired of the Mahomes bloodline. Pat Mahomes, pull it Aaron Rodgers to get rid of your family, man. Start from scratch. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who my family? Jesus Christ. I didn't think I had one, Chris. I stumbled right into that one. So just yeah, so did. for clarification purposes, yeah. you going with the Giants? <laughs> Chiefs. <laughs> Chiefs right. at home, plus 10. Minus 10. Well, I'll tell you, there's so much of me. Never mind. I'll let y'all decide whether I went swinging for the fences or if I'm playing this thing smart. All right. I'm, I'm going with the cheese. Sweet tea. Yeah. I'm telling you, boy, I don't know, brother. You better one game this at a time. I went swinging for the fences. <laughs> now, not with Chris that had, fence. Me There's a lot of fences had, I'll swing at, but not that one. I better no. see it. Me and Chris had a bad week. You might want to see if we can, you know, hang on track here. Yeah. All right, next up. Jets, Colts. Ooh, the Jets. Might that is the Monday. Or I'm sorry, that's <laughs> the Thursday night game, game. November 4th, 8 p.m. Yeah, the Jets are plus 10 and a half. I'm telling you right now, because Mike White's going to start, if you're taking points, you take the Jets plus 10 and a half right now. And I'm a, y'all see the you on my hat. You take the Jets plus 10 and a half. I'm taking the Colts outright on the road. Or excuse me, the, um, hey, at home on TNF. Chris, I'm taking the Colts as well. Don't do it, Jason. I see that twinkling in your eye, man. <laughs> well, they do got, what was it, Mike White? Mike White. That's the most generic name of all time. Boy, that sounds like something True. man just give you the, the next you know, great hey, white hope, brother, is he, Mike White. He did do well today. <laughs> he did. That, that team overall did well yeah. today. I'm worried about it coming out falling out flat, though. Yeah, we'll see what, uh, what Carson I'm tell you, if you could beat the Bengals. Yeah, that's the only thing that concerns me. And that's why I'm saying to take the Jets. Um, hey, plus 10 and a half. I'm taking the Jets. <sighs> That's one loss for Jason. Moving it's on. Offenses. All right. Yeah. Oh, he's swinging. <laughs> swinging. All right. Next one up is going to be Falcons Saints. These start your 1 p.m. Sunday, November 7th games. Chris? I forgot I was first. Uh, I'm going to go Saints based on their performance today. Give me the Falcons because I think the Saints are going to have quite a controversy. Um, excuse me, a quarterback controversy coming in. I'll take the Saints or excuse me, the Falcons. You know, he. Obviously, you know what I'm saying, with Jameis going out, Taysom's first start. Hey, Chris, who's the home team by chance? You know? Saints. Okay, yeah, because no spread has been laid out for this game yet, though. But I probably, yeah, if the Saints the home team, the Saints probably be a favorite to buy about, I'd say a three, three and a half. I'll take the Falcons. Jason, we'd like to know where the, the Saints is for you. The Saints have won games this year that they should not win. That's a fair point. And they've lost games that should they should have won. won. This is a game they should win. Yeah, it's a trap game. So I'm going with a game <laughs> that they're going to lose based off their record. They lose Fair games enough. they should win and win games they should lose. So I'm going with the Falcons. I don't like my pick no more. <laughs> All right, Broncos. Please be wrong, Chris. Broncos, <laughs> right. Cowboys. I'm going to go Cowboys again. Uh, If Dak plays, it's going to be the Cowboys by about 10 to 15. I'll take the boys. I'll take the boys. Dak ain't going to be playing. And the Cowboys are still going. Broncos going. win. <sighs> yeah, he's going deep fence. All right. <laughs> said he's going deep fence. Patriots, Panthers. I've got the Patriots on this one, and they are playing at the Panthers Stadium. And the crazy part is that the Patriots are a field goal. Um, excuse, um, excuse me. The Patriots are a field goal favorite right now. Yeah, I was trying to look at the score to Dallas uh, and Minnesota game. But, yeah. 
the Patriots are a field goal favorite right now, like on the road in Carolina. I'll take the Patriots in the points. Minus three. I think that they're just going to stop a mud hole in Carolina who is just on a downslide. Sam Donald concussed. The P.J. White might have to start. Um, excuse me, Walker may have to start. It's just a disaster right now in Carolina, man. Yeah, I'll take the Patriots. Yeah, Patriots are going to win. Vikings, Ravens. Mm. I'm taking the Ravens. Yes, he will. <laughs> Vikings, Ravens. I'm trying to see if there's a spread for this. Let me no, tell you something. What games have the Ravens lost this year? They've lost two. Mm-hmm. Um, to who? Uh, the Bengals to. were one, I know. Mm-hmm. Sure. One. I can't think who the other one was right out top of the gate. I'm looking. It's not going well for me. Hey, give me one second. I can try to help you real quick. Give me one second. So, Jason, they'll feel some airtime real quick. The white person here trying to help you. Well, the reason I'm asking is because it's a particular type of team that they lose to. Just saying. It was the Raiders and the Bengals. Yep. Teams that has two great weapons at receiver and a quarterback who can dish them the ball by keeping you honest with the run game. Who are they playing next week? I mean, that sounds like the blueprint for the Vikings. That's why I'll be going with the Vikings. Um, yeah, as I said, there's no spread for that game yet because the Vikings haven't finished up the game with the Cowboys. Baltimore was only bye week. I'll take Baltimore. And Jason, you said you were picking Vikings? I'm going with Vikings. Huh? And who'd you take, Baltimore? I picked Ravens, yeah. Okay, fair enough. The Ravens could do get the extra time to prepare for this. Um, so, I mean, I can see the Ravens winning, but I, I have to take a chance somewhere, and I think this is going to be one of those games that they could lose That's because of that reason. That's the yeah. last one. I'll tell you that. Next one up is Browns, Bengals, and I'm mm. thinking. I don't want to pick this game. Ooh, the Browns are only plus two and a half. Thanks. I think, I think the Bengals are going to take this one. I think they're going to take uh, their loss this week and make some improvements on their game. And have something to prove. Yeah, I'm going to kind of piggyback off Chris on this one. Um, yeah, the Bengals are just a field goal underdog with two and a half points at home. Excuse me, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, the next I'll be a dead man in our next segment. No. <laughs> yeah, but give me the Bengals at home at minus two and a half. Easy. That's easy money, man. The Browns are a dumpster fire right now. <laughs> in case Kingdom should start next week while we're here. Y'all should trade Odell. The Bengals have lost two in a row. Here we go. So of the Browns. He's pulling back for the swing. Actually, the Browns lost one in a row because Case Keenan won in the game. He and he didn't win in the game today, to be honest. Is Kareem back? I don't think so. Chubb's still in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chubb's still there. The Browns has a great pass defense. They also have a great pass rush. The strength of the Bengals team is that throw. And the one thing that Joe Burrow doesn't like is a defensive end that can hit. And what does the Browns have? Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett. I'm going with the Browns. All right, Chris. Wow. He said he was going to slow play, and all of a sudden he didn't he didn't snuck back up and uh-huh. snuck the fences. I like it. Bills. He, he, he pump faked this. <laughs> Bills, Jaguars. Call that the play action. I'm going to go with Bills. You don't say. <laughs> you Jag- just wait for my pick on this one. Oh, buddy. you're going for Trevor Lawrence. I feel it. Jaguars are a 14 point underdog at the crib. <laughs> um, I will take the Bengals minus 14. And oh, a half. You're taking who? The, the, Bills. Yeah, the Bills. I I'm thought sorry. he said Bengals. I did, but I meant the Bills. So, you know Bills. how you got that caveat that one week, Chris? We don't get none, but I'm just going to throw this caveat out. I had one last week with Dak Prescott. You yeah. let me I know you don't get it. Now, I'm not going to get it, but I'm just going to put the caveat out. If Urban Meyer gets a lap dance, Jack's gonna win this game. Hey, just for storylines, I'll give him that one. I'm just I saying. feel comfortable <laughs> just so I can have jokes on the next week's show. I'm just I'm saying. very comfortable giving him that caveat. You see what I'm saying? I won't take it. I just want to be known that I said it. If he gets him a lap dance, they're gonna win. Hey, he can, I'm going with the Bills though, because I don't think he's got the the kahunas to go out and, and get a, get another one. All right. Next one. Texans, Dolphins. Who wants to lose more? They are both one and seven. Mm. Well, it's a toilet bowl here, boy. Good. <laughs> Wait, God. is Tyrod back, though? I'm taking Dolphins. If Tyrod is back, that's a bad choice, Chris. I'm taking Dolphins, and I think Tua's going to throw for a minimum 
four touchdowns. Good night. Oh, boy. Chris, hey, 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 hey. Write it up. Hey, are you willing to wager anything on this? Yeah. Like any, like any, anything. Hey, will you come on camera and nothing but that red thong you wear for us on there? <laughs> <laughs> That's why sometimes my eyes be wandering back doing the show. You crazy? Hey, uh, a nice we'll burgundy and gold out. outfit with some. Oh sweet Jesus! <laughs> like, what do they call them? Little stick on thing. Like, <laughs> so I'm going with dolphins, Brandon. <clears throat> uh, hold on one second. I'm trying to figure out if Tyrod returning. If Tyrod returning, this is an easy pick. So he was back today, and Davis Mills got the nod. I don't know if that's more of an organizational thing. You know what I'm saying, though, for them just trying to, you know, hey, get a good feel for Davis Mills, who's obviously really good in garbage time, but atrocious when the game actually matters. Yeah. Um. <sighs> hey, can I just hope both of them lose? Yeah, I picked no sure. winner. It's going to be a tie. Do I get double points for that? Hey, if it happens, I wanted to give him two for For sure. Easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, who you got, man? <sighs> I mean, Miami is the favorite by a touchdown at the crib. So, yeah, give me Miami, man. I'll take Miami. Hey, real I'll- quick. 13-13 on the game. Fair enough. Thank you. I hate Dallas. Um, <laughs> Shocker. I'm going to roll with the Dolphins on this one. They, I mean, they got a great defense. All right. What you got All next? Right, next game, Raiders-Giants. I'll take Raiders. <laughs> Chris is all about the – I know they suck this year. <laughs> well, how are the Giants just a field goal underdog at home? Like, that, that seems a little bit low to me. I'm taking the Raiders in the points this week. I'm definitely taking Raiders on the money line. If you can bet this now, I'd bet this now because the Raiders going to walk the dog on, um, excuse me, the Giants. And plus three, that's yeah. not enough for New York, man. Hey, Raiders plus the points. Good night. I'm going with the points. I'm going with the Raiders as well, and here's why I won. It's the Giants. Because <laughs> you the don't Giants. Want to fall any further behind. It's, a, well, it's the Giants. It's not a team I'm willing yeah, to take a chance say on. Two, it's the Giants. And two, no, nah, no, nah, two, there's an interim head coach. Out in Las Vegas right now, that's building a mighty impressive resume to get the head coach yeah. nod. Uh, and so they got a lot to play for. Playoff implications. And this coach, hey. Because that division yeah. is up right now, boy. Yeah. The Chargers done dropped two. Raiders on the roll. Chiefs in the down year. The yeah, Broncos are at 500. The Jaguars, is, I mean, the Chargers scared me a little bit because, man, they were comfortable. I was like, man, I knew it. I knew it. And then they're going to take a little slack. Like, man, you just want to make it exciting. Stop. Must be, man. I ain't counting out the Chiefs though, until the season's done. Yeah. That's just me. Eagles though. and Chargers. Okay. Oh, my God. I think Chargers looked a little rough today. Uh-huh. This one is actually probably, to me, the most difficult game to pick next week. Oh, oh, really, man, Chris? I, Secret Eagle fan. I think so. Uh, no, not that. But I think this is potentially the most difficult game to pick. Um... I'm going to go Chargers, although I think it could go either way, and it's probably going to be a tight game. Well, uh, the Eagles are plus three at home. That seems a little bit low again. Um, I mean, Vegas is obviously smarter than me. I don't have a Caesars Do Casino in my crib, so they're smarter than me. Um, I'll take the Chargers, man, because I don't think Brandon said they're going to lose a third straight, and I, I just don't like the Eagles as a franchise, if nothing else. The only thing about the Eagles that scare me for the Chargers, the Eagles can run the ball. They can run the football. And what what, what is the Chargers not good at? You know what bothers me is Miles Sanders, who's their starting running back. He's on the hour this week. They couldn't utilize him all year. And the second he leaves, Jordan Howard pops two two touchdowns. Bart Scott pops two touchdowns. And Jenna Hurt gets one. Figure it out, coaching staff. Good grief. Who's next? Jason, the Eagles should win this game on paper. Yeah, but you know what they say about football. It's not paid on paper. But I've taken enough chances already. <laughs> and I want the Chargers to win that division. So I can't root against them. Chargers. It's legal. Chargers it is. All right. Packers, Chiefs. Good luck, boys. I'm going I'm Packers. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. The Packers are plus three on the road. Um... That seems like easy. Ooh, I don't know yet because you know what it depends on? He's got a lot of players out right now. If got a lot Chiefs, of players out this week. Hey, listen to me. If the Chiefs beat the Giants, get a smidge of momentum, and next week if they beat the Packers led by Aaron Rodgers, Ned Flanders himself, that AFC West in trouble. 
Mark, Mark, if they go back to back, the AFC West is in trouble. Well, it's definitely set up for them to go back to back. Give me, because I feel like it's coming. I feel like Kansas City, the sleeping giants, about to be awoke, awakened, woke, however you want to phrase it. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs at home. That one hurt. That's the toughest pick of the week to me, Chris. Okay. Green Bay just went into Arizona and beat them. Mm-hmm. Arizona was undefeated. Yep. Arizona has a top five defense. Mm-hmm. Arizona has an amazing offense. Mm-hmm. Kansas City has a pretty good offense this year. It's not hitting on all cylinders. And Kansas City does not have a great defense. That's putting it nicely. Yeah, I'm going with Ned. That's like Let's saying, go, Packers. Yeah, that's like saying I'm just mildly overweight. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Chiefs defense is just cheeks, man. Cardinals and 49ers. I'm going to go Cardinals. So, going into the year, me and you, both of us, this is the only thing me and you agreed on on the NFC West, was Cardinals was going to finish last. <laughs> man, were we wrong. I told you, man. Kyler it Murray's ain't over fan. yet. It ain't over yeah, yet. Yeah, that's true. Because Cliff <laughs> Kingsbury been known to choke some down the yeah, stretch. Well, we just saw it last game. I don't oh. know how they lost that, but it was... AJ Green. Anyway, anyway, moving on. <laughs> little boy said he went to retirement in mid-play. Yeah, he just quit. <laughs> yeah, the controller one's disconnected. Yeah. Cause checked out, boy. <laughs> um, I would say the Cardinals are two and a half point favorites on the road to San Francisco. It's a late game. It's a division game. So the spread is probably three, three and a half if I had to guess because these games are always ugly, brutal, and tight. Give me the Arizona Cardinals. I think that Jimmy G had a very good game today against um, uh, at the Bears. Excuse me. I just don't think that Kyler Murray is going to give you the same kind of assistance Justin Fields did through the air. I'm taking Kyler Murray. Don't say this a lot. You sounded like the Joker played by uh, Phoenix. Uh, was it Phoenix? What yeah, the Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Yep. Just in Murray. <laughs> you know what the problem is with people like you, Murray? Um, is that some of y'all pick the 49ers and y'all would be crazy because I'm going with the Cardinals. Lastly, Murray. Titans, Rams. Ooh. I'm taking Rams. I think they are you, playing you, really well. You might get your feelings hurt on this one. I'm you know taking I, the Rams. You know a matchup I want to see, and we're going to see it. I want to see Aaron Donald hey, versus Derrick Henry one-on-one in the A-gap. I want to see. Do you know what? If I'm the guard of uh, the Titans, you know what I'm saying, just move out the way because I want to see Mack Truck and Dump Truck. One Oklahoma drill. Up, meet head up right in the hole and see Best what happens. Best of three. I just want to see it one time. I'm telling you, Aaron Donald's a bad boy, man, but Derrick Henry is something built out of Dexter's laboratory. That man is not human. Here's the thing about Eric Henry. Aaron Donald could beat him 15 times. He just got there. But only 16. He going to put up the seven. Yeah, that's that's the thing with defense. You Here's stop. the bad thing, though. <laughs> Tennessee does not have a pass defense. No. And you know what? Uh, and the Rams have an amazing pass off. I offense. was going to say, and the Rams got Cooper Cup, Woods. Vance Jefferson, Robert Woods, yeah. Daryl Henderson, Sony Michelle, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. You couldn't ask for the worst matchup if you were the Titans this week. And that's the 820 primetime game Sunday. Titans are a field goal. But something tells me the they can still win this freaking game because of Eric Henry and Tannehill on offense. It's Derrick Henry. Who is Eric? Yeah. Like, what happened? Yeah, what did I say? Eric. You I said Eric. Derrick. I meant Derrick. I yeah, was I thinking about mean. Eric, but and it was, shut up. It was Derrick. <laughs> he said, shut up. Um,. Yeah, the Titans are field or excuse me, a touchdown dog on the road. I'll take the Rams, man. I think the Rams are just gonna put a whole lot of points on their heads. Here's where I can do it. It could be the worst pick of my life. It could be the best. I have seen the Rams just just like the Ravens collapse in games that they should win. And they'll play down sometimes or their competition. I will give you Tennessee. This game, no offense, Tennessee's a great team. This game should be like forty five to twenty one. I don't think it's that much. Guess. Rams. The best. I give them 35-21 sounds about right. Right? Well, I'm thinking it should be yeah. because that pass defense versus this pass offense. God almighty. However, I have a feeling this game is going to be won 24-21 by the Titans. Spicy pick. Hey, Chris, hit it. Oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. I was not Spicy. prepared. Spicy. Spicy. Oh, wait. That was, I did that one. You that was nice. Here you go. <laughs> What's the score in the uh, Minnesota-Dallas game? 13-13. I really need that win. 
I really need you to not. I'm pretty oh, sure me hey, and Brandon picked hey. separate of you. So, hypothetically speaking, if you picked you no know, Jamar Chase to score a touchdown today and Sam Donner to go over a certain amount of passing yardage, you are very happy with your day. <laughs> I also want to thank the Carolina Panthers last week for allegedly the messing up a very uh, – very hefty payday on a parlay ticket that you can beat the <laughs> New York football giants for God's sake. Christ Oops. almighty. I can't even cheer for Carolina no more because of that. Really you know what? Sunday. Thank you, Vanco Outdoor Power Equipment, for sponsoring this hour of Third Nate here on Next Door Radio, nextdoorradio.com. Folks, this sadly is the end of our Halloween special. Happy uh, Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, Brandon, you're not going to say it? Happy Halloween, man. Y'all stay y'all's kids' Reese's Cup and teach them about taxes that, early. Exactly. <laughs> I was going to say, you got to teach them what tax is all about right now at Halloween. But with that said, picks are in. Will, hey, did I swing for the fences? Hey, real quick. Did I play it smart? Hey, real quick. What's your favorite Halloween candy? Real quick, Chris. Hey, what's Kit your Kat. Oh, God. The Witch's Brew, when they come out with this year, it's got that lime green coating. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. that is good. I did have yeah, that. It is. And that Hershey with the green bottom. The Frankenstein one. Hey, give me Reese's Cups, Chris. Uh, I I will take Kit Kats. Okay, that's two to one. I, hey, I ain't we win. Hey, tune in next week to see if I'm able to catch up. Yeah, Merry Christmas.